India State of Forest Report 2021. So this report was released by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change. So it will be published every two years. The first survey was published in 1987 and this report is the 17th report. The new chapters introduced in this report are Forest Cover Assessment in Tiger Reserves and Tiger Corridor Above Biomass Estimation using Synthetic Aperture Radar Data and mapping of climate change hotspots in Indian forest are the new chapters introduced in this report. So as per the report, the top five states of total forest cover are Madhya Pradesh, Arunachal Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Orissa and Maharashtra. These are the top five states of total forest cover. And the top five states by percent of state's geographic area under forest cover are Mizoram. Mizoram consists of 84.53% of forest cover and Arunachal Pradesh stands second. It covers 79.33% and uh, it is followed by Meghalaya, Manipur and Nagaland. And the state with maximum tree cover is um, Maharashtra. And the states having trees outside forest is Maharashtra, Odisha and Karnataka. And the states and union territories having maximum percentage of tree, trees outside forest are Lakshadweep, Kerala and Goa. See here, uh, when it comes to states having trees outside forest is Maharashtra, Odisha and Karnataka and including states and union territories the top one is Lakshadweep followed by Kerala and uh, next is Goa. So next is the forest cover inside recorded forest area has increased to 31 square kilometers and forest cover outside recorded forest area has increased to 1509 square kilometers and the total forest cover in the hill districts is 40.17 but the trend in the forest cover has decreased to 902 square kilometers or 0.32 percent in 140 hill districts and the total forest cover in tribal districts is 37.53 percent of these districts and uh, Next, it is compared in terms of geographical area. So, 37.53% of these districts geographical area is covered under the total forest cover. So, the trend in forest cover inside the recorded forest area has decreased to 655 square kilometers and outside the recorded forest area has increased to 600 square kilometers in the tribal districts. And in the northeastern region, the total forest cover is 64.66% of its geographical area. And the trend in forest cover has decreased to 120 square kilometers. The forest cover in tiger reserves is 55,666.27 square kilometers, which is 7.80% of the country's total forest cover and 74.51% of the total area of tiger reserves. Next is Nagarjuna Sagar. Nagarjuna Sagar Shrishalam Tiger Reserve in Andhra Pradesh has the largest tiger reserve forest area. And the forest cover in the tiger corridors is 11,575.12 square kilometers which is almost 1.62 percent of the country's total forest cover. So from 2011 to 2021 20, uh, the forest cover in tiger reserves has decreased by 22.6 percent uh, square kilometers and uh, the forest cover in the tiger corridor has increased by 37.15 square kilometers. And the tiger reserve with highest gain in forest cover is Buxa in West Bengal. And the tiger reserve with highest losses in forest cover is the Kaval in Telangana. So total area of mangrove cover is 4,992 square kilometers. And the top states and union territories with mangrove cover is west bengal gujarat and andaman and nicobar islands 
ಆಂಧ್ರ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಒಡಿಸ್ಸಾ ದ ಟ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಂಗ್ರೂವ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಶೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಂಗ್ರೂವ್ ಕವರ್ ಇಸ್ ಒಡಿಸ್ಸಾ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಟಾಪ್ ಟೆನ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಬೂ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಇಸ್ ತ ಮಧ್ಯ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ವಿತ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅರುಣಾಚಲ್ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ವಿತ್ ಟೆನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೈವ್ ತ್ರೀ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಮಹಾರಾಷ್ಟ್ರ ವಿತ್ ನೈನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಝೀರೋ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಒಡಿಸ್ಸಾ ವಿತ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ನೈನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಅಸ್ಸಾಮ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಒನ್ ತ್ರೀ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಛತ್ತೀಸ್ಗರ್ ವಿತ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಕರ್ನಾಟಕ ವಿತ್ ಫೈವ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಮಣಿಪುರ್ ವಿತ್ ಫೈವ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಒನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಂಧ್ರ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ವಿತ್ ಫೋರ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಝೀರೋ ಏಟ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೇಘಾಲಯ ವಿತ್ ತ್ರೀ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ತ್ರೀ ಫೈವ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಫೈವ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆರ್ ಕವರ್ಡ್ ಇನ್ ಅದರ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ದ ಟ್ರೆಂಡ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಆಫ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಬೂ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಡಿಕ್ರೀಸ್ಡ್ ಆಫ್ ಟೆನ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಫೈವ್ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ನೈಂಟಿ ಫೋರ್ ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ದ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಬ್ಯಾಂಬೂ ಬೇರಿಂಗ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ಮಿಜೋರಾಮ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ವಿತ್ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಮಧ್ಯ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಸೊ ದ ಟಾಪ್ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಬೂ ಬೇರಿಂಗ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಇಸ್ ಮಧ್ಯ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ದ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಇನ್ ಬ್ಯಾಂಬೂ ರಿಸೋರ್ಸಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ಫಾರ್ ದಿಸ್ ಒನ್ ದ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದ ಅಮೌಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಅಬ್ಸಾರ್ಬ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ದ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆವೆನ್ ತೌಸಂಡ್ ಟೂ ಹಂಡ್ರೆಡ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಫೋರ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಟನ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಟ್ರೆಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾರ್ಬನ್ ಸ್ಟಾಕ್ ಇನ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾಸ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ಡ್ ಟು ಸೆವೆಂಟಿ ನೈನ್ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಫೋರ್ ಮಿಲಿಯನ್ ಟನ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಟ್ವೆಂಟಿ ಟೂ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಟೂ ಸೆವೆನ್ ಪರ್ಸೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಕವರ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಕಂಟ್ರಿ ಇಸ್ ಹೈಲಿ ಪ್ರೋನ್ ಟು ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫೈಯರ್ಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ದ ಟಾಪ್ ತ್ರೀ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಫಾರೆಸ್ಟ್ ಫೈಯರ್ ಡಿಟೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಒಡಿಸ್ಸಾ ಮಧ್ಯ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಛತ್ತೀಸ್ಗರ್ ದ ಸ್ಟೇಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ವಿಟ್ನೆಸ್ ದ ಹೈಯೆಸ್ಟ್ ಟೆಂಪರೇಚರ್ ಇನ್ಕ್ರೀಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಲದಾಖ್ ಜಮ್ಮು ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಕಾಶ್ಮೀರ್ ಹಿಮಾಚಲ್ ಪ್ರದೇಶ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಉತ್ತರಾಖಂಡ್ and the states that has witnessed the least temperature rise is andaman and nicobar islands west bengal goa tamil nadu andhra pradesh and regions with ex- which experience the highest increase in the rainfall is northeastern states upper malabar coast of india and the reg- regions projected least increase and decrease in rainfall is part of the northeastern states like arunachal pradesh sikkim northwest parts of the country of ladakh jammu and kashmir and himachal pradesh so these are the records the statistics of the forest survey of india report next is um, indian environment science so in 2014 the tsr subramanian committee was constituted and recommended to form an indian environment service ies but these recommendations were rejected by the parliamentary standing committee but again after uh, later on the pil was filed on the destruction of environment and forest so in this context the supreme court has asked the center whether the national bureaucratic set- setup of indian environment service will be implemented or not so for that reason this topic was in news and the next one is cheeta reintroduction plan so the government has planned to introduce cheetas in any of the five recommended sites they are kuno national park kuno palpur national park it is in madhya pradesh and it is the part of shivpur shivpuri deciduous open forest landscape landscape so the big cats like tiger lion leopard and cheetah would coexist in the past in this area so for these reasons they introduce the cheetahs in kuno palpur national park in madhya pradesh and the other recommended sites are Nauradehi Wildlife Sanctuary it is also present in Madhya Pradesh Gandhi Sagar Wildlife Sanctuary
um, the african cheetah and the asia is asiatic cheetahs are the african cheetahs are vulnerable present in appendix 1 found in the northwest eastern and southern parts of africa and it is bigger in size than asiatic cheetah and have diverse diet coming to the asiatic cheetah it is critically endangered and it is also present in appendix 1 status only few are left in iran and small these are these will be smaller than african cheetahs and prey only limited animals like chinkara gazelle etc the next topic is red sanders red sanders is also called as red sandalwood these are listed as the endangered category and that means facing very high risk of extinction in the wild so as per the IUCN report, red sanders have decreased to 50 to 80 percent. So these red sanders are only found in the eastern guards of India and it is a native of only Chitur district of Andhra Pradesh. So red sanders is the deciduous tree of 5 to 8 meters height and when the inner bark of the tree is injured then it oozes a red colored dye called uh, Santolin dye. So these are found in the peninsular India and also Sri Lanka and occurs in patches of dry deciduous forests in southern eastern Ghats. So it, grew, it grows in well drained red soil with graveled uh, loamy and uh, needs rainfall of 800 mm to 1000 mm for a good growth. The next topic is carbon inequality and climate policy. So carbon inequality means the unequal distribution of carbon emissions throughout the world. A study has found that a wealthy people are contributing more than that of the poor. So as per the World Inequality Report 2022, carbon inequality between developed nations is contributing more than 50% than a developed uh, underdeveloped nations. So uh, other uh, related topic is the Oxfam's uh, report called the inequality kills report so as per the report the world's 10 richest men have more than doubled their fortunes during the first two years of the pandemic and other important finding is the richest one percent emit more than twice as much carbon dioxide as that of the other 50 percent of the world next report is indian agriculture post cop 26 green revolution 2.0 so cop 26 was held in glasgow in uk the major discussions were held to change agricultural policies with climate agenda and to introduce green revolution agriculture sector in india contributes to 14 percent of the greenhouse gases so some initiatives which were taken by india for sustainable agriculture are national mission for sustainable agriculture so this mission, a mission aims to make agriculture more productive by using sustainable methods and it is one of, the, one of the mission of National Action Plan on Climate Change. The next one is the National Innovations in Climate Resilient Agriculture Program. Next is National Adaptation Fund for Climate Change. So these are introduced to adopt sustainable methods in agriculture. And PM Krishi Sinchai Yojana. Uh, was launched for water conservation practice soil health card scheme was launched to provide information about the soils to the farmers pradhan mantri krishi vikas yojana was introduced to promote commercial organic production and zero budget natural farming was introduced to promote traditional indian farming and bharatiya prakritik krishi paddhati program was launched to promote on farm biomass recycling and PM Kisan Urja Suraksha Evam Uthan Mahabhyan that is PM Kusum scheme was launched to improve the irrigation in farms using the solar power. The next topic is zero budget natural farming. So Indian Council of Agriculture Research Committee has stated that zero budget natural farming would result in tremendous reduction in the production of agricultural crops compri compromising of food security so bharatiya prakritik krishi paddhati which is 
a sub scheme of paramparagat krishi vikas yojana promotes a traditional farming and the next topic is biodiversities by 2030 so world economic forum has published a report titled biodiversities by 2030 transforming cities so as per the report cities are responsible for the destruction of natural habitat and global biodiversity and the scarcity of water heat island effects loss of coastal habitats poor air quality are the socio economic uh, risk caused by the cities as per the report the next topic is earth is witnessing its sixth mass extinction humans to be blamed a study so mass extinction here means a sudden decline in 75% of the world species in the short span of 2.8 million years so due to the natural phenomena five mass extinctions have taken place but this time the mass extinction is entirely caused by the humans and is called the anthropocene extinction the next topic is India Meteorological Department IMD launches first climate hazards and vulnerability atlas of India so this atlas provides the range of vulnerability with risk ranging from nil to very high categories of extreme weather events of rainfall drought situations cold waves heat waves thunderstorms cyclones lightnings etc The next topic is Global Risk Report 2022. It is published by World Economic Forum. As per the report, 52 countries with 20% of world population have only 6% vaccination. By 2024, the the developing economies, excluding China, the GDP growth of these developing economies will be decreased by 5.5% and 435%. uh will be the increase in the ransomware in by in 2020 was increased so the other top global risk are the climate action failure extreme weather biodiversity loss social cohesion erosion and livelihood crisis so the top 5 risks are the the top 5 risks in india are a uh, fracture of interstate relations debt crisis in large economies widespread youth disil- disillusionment failure of technology governance and digital inequality so these are the risks of both global and indian the next topic is record ocean warming in 2021 coastal communities should be on alert the study so here the important topic are the el nino and the la nina so el nino refers to a band of warmer water spreading from the west to east in the equatorial pacific ocean and during this period oceans release heat contributing to a mini global warming coming to the la nina la nina occurs when the band of water spreads east to west and is uh, is cooler and takes up heat and bury it at the depths away from the surface of the sea and as per the ocean heat content study that is ohc study oceans have been experiencing unambiguous increase in heat and the upper 2000 meters of ocean absorbed 235 zeta joules of heat in 2021 next topic is Zojila Pass so it is located in Kargil district of Ladakh it connects Ladakh to Srinagar it is India's longest road tunnel the next topic is Indonesia Indonesia is the largest archipelago in the world with 17000 islands and is located in Indian and Pacific Ocean it is the fourth most populous nation in the world it has shifted its capital from Jakarta to East Kalimantan next topic is peru so it is the third largest south american country and it is a home of machu picchu sanctuary it is located just south of the equator and mount uh, huascaran is the highest peak 
which is in cordillera blanca which is a part of andes ranges next topic is extended producers responsibility on plastic packaging so the extended producer responsibility or epr promotes the principle of polluter pays that means the producers manufacturers brand owners and first importers of product and packaging of this plastic are given the legal responsibility for collection recycling and end of life management materials of the plastics so the epr policies are established in europe canada japan and south korea and in india india has also introduced the epr rules through the plastic waste management rules of 2016 so the main objective of the epr are reduction of disposals integration of environment cost improved waste management design of environmentally sound products and reduction of burden on municipalities the next topic is ground water extraction guidelines so national green tribunal gave new guidelines in 2020 to address ground water crisis some guidelines are no objection certificate noc holders have to pay ground water charges based on the quantum extraction and no objection no no objection certificate should be given to the industries in the over exploited areas and installation of sewage treatment plants rooftop rainwater harvesting and recharge systems and wells for ground water level monitoring in over exploited areas are these uh, are the recommendations given by the tribunal and another important topic here is central ground water board so it is a highest agency which monitors and regulates the ground water resources of the country it was established in 1970 and is the subordinate of the ministry of jal shakti and some of the initiatives which were taken by the government to secure the ground water are national water policy of 2012 jal shakti abhiyan of 2019 master plan for artificial recharge to ground water in india pradhan mantri krishi sinchai yojana atal bhujal yojana and environment protection act of 1986 for ground water management are the initiatives taken by government for ground water management the next topic is iucn green list of protected and conserved areas so here iucn red list categories are the species which are in danger and iucn green list categories are the species which are very well conserved so in 2021 10 protected areas in switzerland france and italy has exerted iucn green list so no indian site is placed in the green list so the international union of conservation of nature the iucn is the world's leading provider of conservation assessment and analysis of data so it is created in 1948 and has the headquarters in switzerland next topic is dugong so dugong is a species of sea cow found in the warm latitudes of indian and western pacific ocean so most of the world in in most of the world dugong population is present in the northern australian waters so the great barrier reefs has the largest population of dugong gulf of mannar and the adjacent park bay in southeast coast of india in tamil nadu is declared as the india's first dugong conservation reserve even uh, the dugong population is found in five sites including this park bay so it is uh, gulf of kutch in gujarat sindhu durg in maharashtra gulf of mannar and park bay in tamil nadu pulikat lake in uh, tamil nadu chilika lake in odisha so these are the dugong sites found in india the next topic is coastal vulnerability index so this index was prepared by the indian national center for ocean information services this index was prepared to determine the coastal risk due to future sea level rise based on the physical and geological parameters of indian coast so the incois 
Incoys is the in Indian National Center for Ocean Information Services. So the Incoys was established as an autonomous body in 1999 under the Ministry of Earth Sciences. It provides ocean information advisory services to society, in industry, government agencies and scientific community. The next topic is UNEP's Fire Ready Formula for Wildfires. So, United Nations Environment Program called on the global governments to adopt a new fire ready formula. So, as per this formula, the, uh, to manage the wildfires, prevention, response, recovery, preparedness and planning should be focused. So, as per the UNEP report, the number of wildfires is likely to increase by 40 per 14 percent by 2030 and to 33% by 2050 and to 50% by 2100 years. So, India has also taken, taken strong legal measures for the forest fire prevention and management. So, as per the Indian Forest Act of 1927, it is a criminal offence to burn or allow the fire to remain burning in the reserved and protected forest. And as per the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972, setting fire in wildlife sanctuaries is prohibited. And National Action Plan on Forest Fires 2018 has been formulated to reduce the forest fires. Next is Forest Fire Prevention and Management Scheme was launched in 2017 to assist the states to reduce forest fires. Next topic is Marine Heat Waves. So, marine heat waves occur when the average temperature of ocean surface rises 5 to 7 degrees above the normal temperature. And experts have stated that frequent marine heat waves in Indian Ocean disrupts Indian, India's monsoon patterns. The next topic is green hydrogen or and the green ammonia. So, when hydrogen and ammonia is produced using renewable energy, then it is termed as green hydrogen or the green ammonia. So, green hydrogen and ammonia are the future fuels with zero carbon rate. For the production of hydrogen, steam methane reforming method, uh, methane pyrolysis, coal gasification, electrolysis of water are the methods of production. Whereas, uh, for the production of ammonia, it is hazard birch process. So, the Ministry of Power has framed a policy for the production of hydrogen and ammonia using the renewable sources of energy. The next topic is... One Ocean Summit. UNESCO pledges to have at least... 80% of the seabed mapped by 2030. So here, One Ocean Summit was organized by France. So its objective is to bring awareness in the international communities and to preserve and protect and support healthy and sustainable ocean ecology. So in One Ocean Summit, UNESCO has announced that by 2030, at least 80% of the seabed will be mapped so here the seabed mapping of the seabed is done through bathymetric survey the next topic is unep that is united nation environment program has released its annual frontiers report so the title of the report is noise blazes and mismatches so, in this report, noise pollution, wildfires and seasonal changes in plants and animals were identified as issues of the environmental concerns. The next topic is wetlands, the unsung heroes of the planet. So, for the first time, World Wetlands Day was observed on Feb 2nd. So, wetlands store more carbon than any other ecosystem. It is a home for over 1 lakh freshwater species. It acts as natural shock observers. So, some of the global initiatives on wetlands are the Ramsar Convention, Sustainable Development Goal 6 is committed to the protection and restoring of wetlands and uh, 
is a special focus of the UN Decade on Ecosystem Restoration. So these are the global initiatives of wetland. The next topic is Center constitutes Ken Betwa Link Project Authority. So it is the first project under National Perception Plan for interlinking the rivers. So under this project, the water is transferred from Ken River to the Betwa River. So this project aims to address the perennial water scarcity in the regions of Bundelkhand spread across the Madhya Pradesh and Uttar Pradesh. But one concern is the Dhaudan Dam will be built under this project where 7.6% of Panna Tiger Reserve area will be submerged. The next topic is Kasiranga National Park, a net carbon emitter. So Kasiranga National Park in Assam has largest population of one horned rhinosaurs in the world. It is also the tiger reserve and it is an important bird area. It is a deciduous forest with unique soil where large number of bacteria are present in that soil and release carbon dioxide. So the trees present in the national park has low photosynthetic activity in the monsoon season because of heavy cl cloud cover. So as per the research conducted by Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorological and Tespur University, Kaziranga National Park is releasing more carbon than it is absorbing. The next topic is star rating system for SEIAA. SEIAA is State Environment Impact Assessment Authority. So this provides permissions and environmental clearance for more than 90% of infrastructure development and industrial projects in the country. So Environmental Impact Assessment Division of Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change has introduced SCIAA. So the next one is other effective areas based conservation measures. So OECM that is other effective area based conservation measures. So OECM site tag is given to those areas which has rich biodiversity outside the protected areas like outside the protected areas like national parks, sanctuaries. So it is given by the IOCN. The Aravali Biodiversity Park in Gurugram is declared as the first OECM site. The next topic is white cheeked macaque. So they were found in Arunachal Pradesh for the first time in India and it was first discovered in 2015 in China and these were not included in the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. Next is Pola Vatta. Pola Vatta was a new species of fish identified in the Indian coast. So it belongs to the queen fish group. So these fishes were identified by the Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute. Next is Tonga Volcano Plume Reached Mesosphere. So the heavy smoke of Tonga Volcano reached the Mesosphere layer which is 50 to 85 kilometers high. So these Tonga Volcanoes are located along the Pacific Ring of Fire. Next is India lacks solar waste handling capacity. So here India is aiming to become the world's largest solar power generator. So as per the report of International Renewable and uh, Renewable Energy Agency, the global photovoltaic waste will touch 78 million tons by 2050. And India is expected to be one of the top five photovoltaic waste creators. Next is GAIL, G-A-I-L. It is Gas Authority of India Limited. So GAIL starts India's Maidan project of blending hydrogen into CD, CGD, that is City Gas Distribution Network at Indore. So gas, uh, that is G-A-I-L, is going to blend hydrogen in the City Gas Distribution Network. So it will be used for the domestic, commercial and as well as industrial consumption. 
the next topic is green highways policy 2015 so under this policy 244.68 lakh plants have been planted so this policy aims to promote greening of corridors across all in the all uh, national highways of the country next topic is laksha zero dump sites so housing of uh, so this uh, laksha zero dump sites was approved by the ministry of housing and urban affairs so under this project a uh, few years old garbage dump sites will be removed next is nanoplastic nanoplastic these are the smaller than the microplastics so these are present in the densely populated areas oceans and also enter into air so when we breathe when we breathe that air through lungs it enters into the blood so as per the study conducted at alps the plastic nano particles travel at least 1200 miles in air before settling next topic is ipcc's sixth assessment report part 2 so ipcc here me is intergovernmental panel on climate change so as per the assessment report released by ipcc in the low lying coastal systems there might be a loss of lives livelihood and disruption in transportation and in terrestrial and marine ecosystems there might be a change in functioning of the ecosystem and loss of biodiversity and there will be an impact in the living standards water security food security and an impact on human health as well the second uh, is the next topic is india specific findings so some specific effects on india due to climate change are ganges and interstate sabarmati river basin could face severe water scarcity challenges extreme weather events like frequent heat waves droughts in arid and semi arid areas floods in monsoon region cyclones in coastal areas and glacier melting in hindu kush himalayan regions might occur and there will be an impact in the health food production and energy security so some initiatives launched by the government of india are building an artificial glaciers ice to pass snow barrier bands by the local communities in ladakh and zaskar region and himachal pradesh and uh, ahmedabad has developed annual heat action plan so here uh, they build uh, they uh, make regulations to minimize trapping of heat manage heat uh, heat street and implementing cool roof policy so by these methods uh, the heat waves can be reduced to some extent the next topic is national dolphin day so october 5 will be celebrated as the national dolphin day so in india gangetic dolphin is present in the fresh water and is declared as the national aquatic animal in 2009 the presence of gangetic dolphin provides overall condition of the water so this dolphin is one among the four fresh water dolphins present in the world the other three fresh water dolphins are the baiji in yangtze river the bulan in indus river which is in pakistan the boto in amazon river so these are the four fresh water dolphin in india the gangetic dolphins are found in very long deep rivers in assam bihar jharkhand rajasthan uttar pradesh west bengal so the vikramshila gangetic dolphin sanctuary in bihar is the only dolphin sanctuary in india so the projects like Do- project dolphin the conservation action plan for ganges river dolphin 2010 to 20 are some of the conservation efforts made by the country the next topic is disaster management action plan on ministry of panchayat raj so article 243 g provides about panchayat raj system so as per this article the state government has to give powers to all the three tier panchayats on all the matters present in 11th schedule so 11th schedule tells about panchayats and uh, the word disaster is not present 
in the 11th schedule but it tells to take all the measures reconstruction and mitigation measures that are required for the disaster management next article 243d sorry article 43zd tells that as uh, all the states should constitute a district planning committee which can prepare a draft district development plan which leads to the reduction in the disaster risk so some initiatives made for the disaster management action plan are um disaster management plan for each village and panchayat modified bottom up approach community based disaster management planning participating uh, and inclusive planning process competence based training on disaster management so these are some initiatives taken to uh, reduce the disasters so next topic is UNEA adopts historical resolution end plastic pollution towards an internationally legally binding instrument so united nation environment assembly was created in 2012 and is the world's highest level decision making body on environment so it is a governing body of unep so it meets twice a year to make regulations for environment policies and develop international environmental laws so 175 nation representatives met in nairobi the capital of kenya and decided to make international legally binding agreements by 2024 to end the plastic pollution the next topic is unep's frontier report 2022 so the title of the report is noise blazes and mismatches so as per the report long term exposure to noise pollution from road traffic railways or leisure activities causes premature deaths heart disease metabolic disasters so disorders so the highest noise pollution is recorded in dhaka bangladesh and moradabad so noise pollution rules 2000 and central pollution control board and environment and protection rules 1986 make regulations on the noise pollution next topic is meena mata convention so meena mata convention deals with the protection of human health and environment from mercury pollution india has the second largest you india is the second largest user of mercury after us so it the mercury may lead to toxic effects on nervous system digestive and immune systems lungs skin kidney and eyes so to control mercury pollution meena mata convention was adopted in 2013 after meena mata disease which was a serious neuro- neurological dis- disease caused by mercury poisoning in 1950s so india has signed meena mata convention in 2014 next topic is earth hour so on march 26th earth hour is established is celebrated globally to turn and they celebrate by turning off non essential lights for one hour as a symbol for commitment to planet so it was organized by the world wildlife fund which is an international non government organization established in 1961 and its headquarters is in switzerland next topic is permafrost peatlands in europe western siberia nearing tipping point study so here peatland is a type of wetland many living and dead aquatic animals bacteria and dead plants are present in it so uh, there are only 3% peatlands globally but store carbon which is double than all the world's forest the peatland which are covered by ice sheets are frozen to minus 32 degree fahrenheit or 0 degree celsius for continuously 2 years then those are called permafrost peatlands so as per a recent study by 2040 northern europe might become too wet and warm to support the permafrost peatlands by 2060 europe and western siberia could lose 75% of permafrost peatlands the next topic is carrying capacity so uh, carrying capacity means the species uh, average population size is 
in a particular habitat is limited based on the environmental factors like food shelter etc so the wildlife institute of india suggested that sundarbans have released the carrying capacity uh, reached the carrying capacity so sundarbans is a world's largest mangrove delta and is the home for royal bengal tigers so it is declared as a uns uh, unesco world heritage site in 1987 the next topic is software with intelligence making marking based identification of asiatic lion simba to identify asiatic lions so uh, simba is a new software adopted by the gujarat forest department to identify asiatic lions so asiatic lions are found only in india in five protected areas in gujarat they are found in gir national park gir sanctuary paniya sanctuary mithiala uh, sanctuary and girnia sanctuary so these were listed as scheduled one under wildlife protection act 1972 and in appendix 1 of sites and they are in endangered species list of iucn's red list the next topic is indian wolves so at present there are only 3100 species left in india so indian wolves are found in scrub grasslands and agro pastoral regions in semi arid india so it is the highest in madhya pradesh followed by rajasthan gujarat maharashtra and chhattisgarh so they are listed in schedule 1 status of wildlife act of 1972 appendix 1 status of sites least concern status of iucn so next one is uh, next topic is golden langur so as per the recent study there is a significant decline in golden langur uh, langur species so they are found in the foothills of bhutan east of manas river west of sankosh river and south of brahmaputra river so um, it is also listed in appendix 1 endangered and threatened status next is rough tooth dolphin a research team in lakshadweep has found the first ever rough toothed dolphin in indian waters so they are found generally in tropical and warmer temperate waters all over the world next is uh, next topic is olive ridley turtles arrive at odisha coast at for mass nesting so aribada means a mass nesting phenomena okay aribada was occurred in gohirmata gahirmata coast in odisha and gahirmata coast is the world's largest nesting sites of olive ridley turtles followed by rushikulya rushikulya coast so it is also a coast in odisha so these turtles are found in warm tropical regions of pacific indian and atlantic oceans so these are under vulnerable category of iucn status and is listed in schedule 1 of indian wildlife protection act of 1972 and also listed in appendix 1 site of sites next topic is carbon carbofurin so it is the pesticide which is widely used in agricultural and non agricultural purposes so due to this pesticide poisoning of 95 himalayan griffon vultures and steppe eagle in assam was done uh, ha- was happened and these vulture species have died so the himalayan uh, griffon vultures are found in the western china kazakhstan uzbekistan kyrgyzstan tajikistan afghanistan pakistan east himalayan mountains of india nepal bhutan central china and mongolia the next topic is mekadatu dam so it is planned mekadatu dam was planned to build across kaveri river by karnataka as a reservoir and drink uh, drinking water project but tamil nadu government has passed a resolution against the mekadatu dam next topic is manas national park so manas river is a major tributary of brahmaputra river which passes through the national park so there are a, there was a sharp rise in the tiger and rhino population in this park so this part 
this park the manas national park is the unesco wildlife Sanch- world heritage site and tiger reserve elephant reserve biosphere reserve national park and also a wildlife sanctuary so it is located in assam next topic is sariska tiger reserve so it is located in rajasthan and is famous for the royal bengal tigers next topic is international monsoon project office launched so it was launched to do research activities to expand scientific approach to seasonal variability of monsoon enhancing pre- prediction skills of monsoons cyclones etc so it is coordinated by the world meteorological organization uniform carbon trading market so carbon trading is buying of buying and selling of carbon permits to different countries so the ca- central government is planning to implement a carbon trading scheme the next topic is prime minister urja suraksha evam uttan mahabiyan scheme or pm Kis- uh, kusum scheme so under this scheme solar power plants are installed by the uh, by the government to the uh, for farmers where the farmers can get free electricity for uh, m- pump motors or and other purposes so it is launched by the ministry of new and renewable energy the next topic is state energy and climate index so uh, this index was launched by niti ayog to track the efforts made by the states and union territories in climate and energy sector and other important global indexes are world energy trilemma index published by world energy council and india was ranked 75 out of 127 countries in 2021 the next index is the energy transition index published by world economic forum and india was ranked 87 out of 115 in countries in 2021 the next index is renewable energy country attractiveness index published by ernest and young so india was ranked three out of 40 countries in 2021 climate change performance index published by german watch ev so india was ranked 10 out of 63 countries in 2022 the next topic is sustainable sand management so sustainable sand management report was released by unep with the title sand and sustainability 10 strategic recommendations to avert a crisis so some uh, recommendation some alternatives of sand or manufactured uh, or manufactured sand are given here so they are co and byproducts of industrial and extractive processes and crushed rock sand recycled fine aggregates these are some of the alternatives of sand the next topic is scope of authority under dam safety act 2021 so there was a dispute between tamil nadu and kerala over mulla periyar dam in the supreme court so mulla periyar dam is the 126 year old dam and is maintained by the tamil nadu government periyar tiger reserve is located within this reservoir so kerala claims that the dam is weak and can be can get destructed at any moment but tamil nadu claims that it is safe and well maintained next topic is punjab haryana dispute over river waters so satlas yamuna river water is to be shared between haryana and punjab so satlas water satlas yamuna linking project was a linking canal proposal was planned in 1966 so haryana has constructed in its state but punjab is delaying to construct the canal because it is worried that due to the over exploitation of the ground water in punjab state water scarcity may occur by 2029 and this was also suggested by the reports the next commit uh, topic is convention on biological diversity cbd so yes uh, so cbd is uh, an international treaty opened at earth summit 
in Rio de Janeiro with 196 parties. So it aims for conservation of biodiversity, sustainable use of components of biodiversity. Next topic is Mother Nature, a living being with legal entity, Madras High Court. So the High Court directed the states and central government to protect Mother Nature. Next topic is Indian Tent Turtle. So it is present in Orissa, Maharashtra, Andhra Pradesh, Assam, Ma Madhya Pradesh, Nepal and Bangladesh. So it is found in the freshwater river, swamps and ponds. So it is present in Scheduled 1 under Wildlife Protection Act of 1972. So it has least concern status of IUCN, Appendix 2 status of sites. Next topic is Seaweed Park with Special Economic Zone status in Tamil Nadu. So seaweeds are the marine non-flowering algae without roots, stems and leaves. They are of different colors like red, green, brown and black. So large seaweeds are also found. So these large seaweeds form dense forest in the underwater sea called uh, kelp forest. So these are the largest uh, source of food for fishes. So to improve the livelihoods of fishermen, under the pre, uh, Pradhan Mantri Matya Sampada Yojana, Seaweed Park was set up for the first time. It was first time set up in Tamil Nadu. The next topic is Global Land Outlook to Land Restoration for Recovery and Resilience. So Global Land Outlook to report was uh, released by the UN Conven Convention to Combat Desertification. So the next topic is nitrogen levels on a decline so as per the study nitrogen levels are decreased uh, are decreasing continuously and due to the decrease in the nitrogen plants growth and rate growth rate will be small and with a small flowering and fruits the next topic is world bank published carbon revenues from international shipping report so the carbon revenues from international shipping ref, uh, shipping report was published by the world bank the next topic is first carbon neutral panchayat so carbon neutrality means keeping a balance between emitting carbon and absorbing carbon from atmosphere in uh, carbon sinks so palli panchayat in jammu has become india's first carbon neutral panchayat Next topic is steel slag road. So steel slag is a byproduct of steel making. So Surat has become the first city in the country to get processed steel slag road. The next topic is mission integrated biorefineries. So biorefineries are processing facilities that converts biomass into biofuels, biochemicals and other biomaterials. So Ministry of Science and Technology has launched mission integrated biorefineries to accelerate clean energy solutions. The next topic is green hydrogen. So hydrogen generated with renewable energy is called green hydrogen. So India's first pure green hydrogen plant was launched in Assam. Next topic is Global Assessment Report on Disaster Risk Reduction 2022. So it is released by the United Nations. The next topic is Chamoli Disaster. So the scientists have found the reason for the Chamoli Disaster in Uttarakhand. So it is due to the detachment of ice and rock not due to the glacial lake output outburst floods the next topic is study points that sea floor spreading has slowed by 35 percent globally so sea floor spreading is spreading is the geological process that creates crust so sea floor spreading rate has decreased from 200 millimeters per year to 140 millimeters per year the next topic is geometric geomagnetic storm so geomagnetic storm is a disturbance in the earth's magnetosphere which is the area around the planet controlled by its magnetic field 
so the earth's magnetosphere protects its inhabitants from most of the particles emitted by the sun so space weather production uh, prediction center under national oceanic and atmospheric administration has issued two geomagnetic storm weather watches so next topic is bernardinelli bernstein comet so comets are the large objects made of dust and ice and orbit around the sun so nasa has confirmed that bernardinelli bernstein comet is the largest icy comet nucleus ever seen by the astronomers the next topic is international plant based food working groups so plant based foods are the food products that are made completely from the plants without any animal derived in, in ingredients so international plant based foods working group was formed with the association of seven countries including india next topic is cop 15 of united nation convention to combat desertification so cop 15 meeting was held in abidjan the theme is land life legacy from scarcity to prosperity so new commitments framed in this meeting is to accelerate restoration of 1 billion hectares of degraded land by 2030 addressing the issues of the degraded land and forced migration improve women's involvement in land management etc so this meeting mainly concentrates on the land and life which is the sustainable development goal number 15 the next topic is sustainable city development so united nation habitat has identified jaipur city suffering from the issues caused by urbanization like environmental hazards vulnerability over exploitation of water land and air so the a sustainable city is one that can address all the issues related to social environmental and economic changes through urban planning and city management so sustainable cities integrated approach pilot project was launched with jaipur development authority and jaipur greater municipal corporation to make jaipur a sustainable city the next topic is state of the world forest 2022 so this report is released by the un united nations food and agriculture organization so as per the report forest absorbed more carbon than they emitted in 2011 to 20 so about 420 million hectares of forest is lost th- through the deforestation between 1990 and 2020 and 1% of global employment which is estimated to be 33 me- uh, 33 million people work directly or indirectly in the forest sector so, and about 4.17 billion people live outside urban areas with 5 kilometers of forest within 5 kilometers of forest and 30% of new diseases are caused due to the deforestation effects national policy on biofuels 2018 so biofuel is a liquid transportation fuel derived from agricultural produce forest or any other organic materials ethanol and biodiesel are some examples as per this policy more than 20% of ethanol will be blended with petroleum by 2025 to 26 so some of the initiatives which are taken by government of india are pradhan mantri jeevan that is jaiv indhan vatavaran anukul fasal avasheshi nivaran so under this initiative under the scheme uh, the financial support is provided for the bioethanol projects next is repurpose used cooking oil by fss ai so under this uh, policy diversion is diversion of used cooking oil from f- food to biodiesel manufacturers will be done next is gobardhan scheme so under this scheme organic waste is converted into biogas and fertilizer next is e100 project so it is launched to set up a network for the production and distribution across the nation the next is initiative is ethanol production and promotion policy from states like bihar 
has the first greenfield grain based ethanol plant in purnia the next topic is coal gasification so coal gasification is a process of converting coal into synthesis gas or syn gas which is a mixture of hydrogen and carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide the next topic is urban fire so urban fire in cities has potential to rapidly spread to adjoining structures so due to inadequate fire and emergency services due to human error poor enforcement of norms rapid and unplanned uh, urbanized urbanization leads to urban fires so some fire safety regulations made in india are here Uh, so in the 12th schedule of the constitution and under article 243 w the fire services come under the power authority and responsibility of urban local bodies and the national building code of india 2016 was passed to the states to regulate the building bylaws and next is model bill to provide for the maintenance of fire and emergency service for the state was made to make uh, regulations to fire prevention and fire safety measures in various types of buildings and premises next is national disaster management authority has also stipulated requirements for fire safety in public buildings including hospitals next topic is deep and shallow eco- uh, ecologism so deep ecologism theory argues that the interests of the other living beings have to be treated as seriously as the interests of human beings so it is advocated by norwegian philosopher arne nais in 1970 and shallow ecologism states that nature is the only valuable nature is only valuable in so far as it serves the human race The next topic is state of the global climate report 2021. So it is released by the World Meteorological Organization and as per the report the concentration of carbon dioxide has reached 149% of the pre-industrial level. And methane and nitrous oxide also continued to increase in 2021. Global mean temperature in 2021 was 1.11 to 0.13 it ranges from this centigrade above the pre-industrial era and global mean sea level is rising 4.5 mm per year and due to hydrometeorological hazards highest internal migration took place in countries like china vietnam philippines and ozone hole over antarctica was usually large and deep in 2021 extreme Uh, weather was held to billions of dollars of economic loss another important topic is the world meteorological organization so it is an intergovernmental organization with 193 member countries including india so it is a specialized agency of united nations and it is headquarters is in geneva the next topic is first movers coalition so under this decarbonizing seven industrial sectors which are aluminium aviation aviation chemicals concrete shipping steel and trucking sector was taken up as a global initiative and india has also joined the first movers coalition steering board the next topic is world economic forum launches india's indian ceos alliance for net zero india so this alliance is the a high level platform to support business leaders for planning and implementing projects that can achieve climate targets so to encourage india's climate action plan and decarbonization efforts world economic forum has launched this alliance so india has also launched panchamrit project to tackle the climate change so they are to increase non fossil fuel capacity to 500 gigawatts by 2030 to meet 50% of energy requirements from renewable energy by 2030 and to reduce carbon emissions by 1 billion tons by 2030 and to reduce carbon intensity by less than 45% of by 2030 and to achieve target of net zero by 2070 
The next topic is Raja Rajasthan emerges as solar hub with 10 gigawatt capacity. So Rajasthan became the first state in large scale solar installation. Renewable energy of 55%, thermal energy of energy of 43% and nuclear energy of 2% are the amount of energies used by the Rajasthan. Next is People's Biodiversity Register PBR. So PBR is a detailed information of the locally available bio resources including landscapes, demography of a particular area in villages. So Kolkata has become the first major metropolitan city to prepare a detailed register of biodiversity. Next topic is Ramgarh Vishdhari Tiger Reserve. So it is between Uh, it is it is a reserve in Rajasthan and it is in between Ratambore Tiger Reserve and Mukundara Hills of Mukundara Hills Tiger Reserve. So in Rajasthan, four tiger reserves are present. They are Ratambore Tiger Reserve, Mukundara Tiger Reserve, and Sariska Tiger Reserve, and this Ramgarh Vishdhari Tiger Reserve. The next topic is India finalizes deals for cheetah. from south africa and namibia so cheetahs were translocated from africa to kuno national park in madhya pradesh the next topic is one in six global deaths in 2019 linked to pollution lands and study so as per the report 9.8 lakh deaths in india was caused due to the pm 2.5 pollution 9 lakh premature deaths were caused by lead pollution as per this reports the next topic is 2022 international dark sky week conducted from april 22 to 30 so it was conducted to uh, bring awareness about the negative impacts of light pollution next topic is climate emergency so climate emergency is the need to reform climate at any cost and uh, vanuatu vanuatu's country has decide, declared climate emergency next topic is world food prize so it is award created by the nobel prize, peace prize so it is given to the people who have improved the quality and availability of food so it is also considered as a nobel prize in agriculture so it was awarded by world food prize foundation so nasa climate scientist has won this award the next topic is fostering effective energy transition report released by world economic forum so energy transition here means a shift from fossil based energy system to renewable energy sources the next topic is scheme for setting up manufacturing zone for power and renewable energy equipment so this scheme is proposed by ministry of power and ministry of new and renewable energy so this scheme aims to establish a manufacturing of equipment components and spares for the power sector and uh, renewable energy sector the next topic is jal jeevan mission achieves 50% completion milestone so jal jeevan mission was launched in 2019 by the ministry of jal shakti till now goa telangana andaman and nicobar islands dadra and nagar haveli and daman and diu puducherry and haryana have achieved 100% household connectivity the next topic is bharat tap so ministry of housing and urban affairs has launched bharat tap to reduce the water consumption at the source so amrut 2.0 so this amrut 2.0 was launched by the ministry of housing and urban affairs so it will provide 100% coverage of water supply promote atmanirbhar bharat and promote circular economy of water the next topic is uh the next important uh, scheme is swachh bharat mission 2.0 so it is launched by the ministry of housing and urban affairs so it aims to make all the cities uh carbon free and ensure grey and black water management in all the cities the next topic is participatory irrigation management it means providing equal distribution of water resources to f- farmers 
through water user association and participatory irrigation management act of 2007 so it will uh, it is monitored under the ministry of water resources so one important topic over here is the water users association so it is a community based organization uh, that shares common interest of well performing irrigation systems the next topic is un experts call upon nations to tap unconventional water resources so there are six categories of unconventional water resources identified by unconventional water resources written book so this book is written by the experts at united nation university universities institute for water environment and health so they are harvesting water from air and ground by cloud seeding or rain enhancement or fog, fog harvesting next is desalination um, the next method is tapping fresh water and brackish ground water off shores and on shores and reusing used water moving water physically to water scarce areas micro scale capture of rain water so these are all the six categories of unconventional water resources the next topic is prime minister inaugurated world's first liquid nano urea plant at kalol in gujarat so liquid nano urea plant uh, liquid nano urea is a patented nitrogen fertilizer developed by iffcos Na- nano biotechnology research center so it is directly sprayed to the leaves so it reduces soil water and air pollution and has higher shelf life the next topic is cyclone asani in bay of bengal intensified into severe storm so asani cycle is the first cyclonic storm in 2022 occurred in north indian ocean region so asani name was given by sri lanka the next cyclone name will be called sitrang which is given by thailand so tropical cyclones are formed when sea surface temperature rises higher than 27 degrees centigrade with the presence of coriolis coriolis force and weak low pressure so it originates near the equator the next topic is ancient forest discovered in chinese sinkhole so when the earth surface collapses like a large cave then it is called a sinkhole there are two types of sinkholes one is cast form when rain water combined with carbon dioxide converts into carbonic acid and dissolves a rock which have fractures or openings and forms a long cave and uh, the second type is when the roof of the cave collapses and exposes underground cave so a clear cave exploration team has discovered ancient forest at the bottom of the giant cast sinkhole in china the next topic is pan pan pantanal wetland so it is a freshwater wetland present in south america and it is one of the world's largest tropical wetland next topic is 50 years of stockholm conference So in 1968 Sweden has proposed Stockholm conference and in 1972 United Nations first major Stockholm conference was held on environmental issues with the theme only one earth so 122 countries have adopted it the outcomes of this are so here under uh, stockholm conference the establishment of unep which was global authority to set the environmental agenda was established and more than 500 multilateral environmental agreements were adopted from the last 50 years of stockholm Convent conference and uh, so united nations framework convention on climate change UNFCC and convention to Cam- combat desertification that is UNCCD and convention on biological diversity that is CBD were established were established from some of these meetings so 
sustain uh, next is sustainable development and environmental ministries were also adopted by all the countries as per the stockholm conference agreements the next topic is climate equity so climate equity means protecting from environmental hazards as well as providing environmental benefit projects so india has made an intervention during the closing plenary of bonn climate conference stating that equity is being overlooked in climate negotiations the next topic is ban on single use plastics so from july 1st 2022 several single use plastic items identified by the ministry of environment and forest and climate change were was banned the next topic is forest conservation rules 2022 so it is notified under the ministry of environment forest and climate change so under these rules lands were made easily available for afforestation tribal rights are secured for infrastructure development purposes forest land should be diverted and uh, the next important topic is scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers act of 2006 so under this act the ownership of the land is uh, granted to the tribals and forest dwellers to maximum of 4 hectares forest produce can be used grazing areas and pastoralist routes can be used and the forest management rights are given to the tribal communities to protect forest and wildlife the next topic is eco sensitive zones so eco sensitive zones are the areas around the protected areas like wildlife sanctuaries from industrial pollution and unregulated development so it is defined under the environmental protection act of 1986 the supreme court has directed that every protected forest national park and wildlife sanctuary in the country should have 1 km of eco sensitive zones from their boundaries the next topic is water insecurity so as per the falcon marks under water stress index 76% of the people in india are facing water scarcity and according to some estimates the annual per capita availability of water in india has declined by 75% making india highly water insecure nation the next topic is water convention so it is an international legal instrument and intergovernmental platform that aims to ensure sustainable use of transboundary water resources and it is a powerful tool to achieve the objective of sustainable development goal number 6 which is a clean water and sanitation so world water forum is the world's largest event on water and it is organized every 3 years to provide solutions for global water challenges the next topic is land subsidence in coastal areas so land subsidence is the sudden sinking of the earth surface due to removal or displacement of the earth's material so as per the research of iit bombay experts mumbai is sinking at the pace of 2 mm per year due to land subsidence the next topic is floods in northeast india so due to the geography and topography of northeastern states shifting water courses high silt floods occur at extreme lands in the northeastern states so the initiatives taken by the government for flood management are brahmaputra board was set up as a statutory body under brahmaputra board act of 1980 which created integrated management of flood or of river basins of international and interstate rivers next is flood management program was implemented for river management flood control anti erosion etc and uh, central water commission was set up in 1945 for promoting measures related to flood control and uh, national water policy tw- uh, 2012 was set up to accommodate development needs for rivers The next topic is Sustainable Development Report 2022. So it is released by the Sustainable Development Solution Network. So as per the report, Finland has stopped the 
topped the index and India was ranked 121 out of 163 countries. Next topic is uranium mining. So uranium is a naturally occurring radioactive material. So it is not a rare metal element of earth. So vast amount of uranium is found in the world's oceans with very low concentrations. So Kazakhstan has the largest uranium reserves and is also the largest producer of uranium followed by Namibia and Canada. So Rajasthan has issued a letter of mining lease for uranium mining to the Uranium Corporation of India and uh, Mines and Minerals Act, Mineral Conservation and Development Rules and Mineral Conservation Rules guide mining and exploration of uranium. So uranium is used for nuclear energy, nuclear medicine, radioactive dating, food processing, industrial x-rays, material science and military applications. So in India, uranium reserves are found in Aravalli ranges in Rajasthan, Bhima Basin in Karnataka, Kadapa Basin in Andhra Pradesh and Chhattisgarh Basin Singbum Thrust Belt in Jharkhand and Mahadeg Basin in Meghalaya. The next topic is Major Economies Forum on Climate Change. So, Major Economic Forum was launched in 2009 and is aimed to develop more efforts against climate change for the countries which are emitting more. The next topic is Leader in Climate Change Management. So, it is a practice-based learning program for capacity building to reduce the climate change. The next topic is Global Environment Facility Council. So it is established during 1992 Rio Earth Summit. It provides funds for five international environmental conventions. So they are UNCCD, UNFCCC, Minamata Convention, Mercury and Stockholm Convention. The next topic is Environment Performance Index. So it is released by the World Economic Forum in collaboration with the Yali Center for Environmental Law and Policy and Columbia University Center for International Earth Sciences Information Network. So India was ranked 180 out of 180 countries. The next topic is UN Ocean Conference. So Sustainable Development Goal number 14 talks about the life below water. So this conference was held to address the challenges required for sustainable transmission of oceans. The next topic is Carbon Pricing Leadership Report 2021-22. to It was prepared by the Secretariat of Carbon Pricing Leadership Coalition. The next topic is Carbon Dioxide Levels are now comparable as what they were 4 million years ago. So Carbon Dioxide was measured at Mauna Loa slopes which is the world's largest active volcano and is measured by Mauna Loa Atmospheric Baseline Observatory. The next topic is Commission for Air Quality Management bans use of coal in Delhi. So nearby cities from Delhi and nearby cities from January 2022. So, to reduce greenhouse gases, it was launched. Next topic is zoos exempted from permissions under FCA. So, before keeping zoos, so for keeping zoos, many permissions were required. But now, under the Forest Conservation Act, zoos will be exempted from taking multiple permissions. So, Forest Conservation Act. So, this topic, uh, this uh, Forest Conservation Act was introduced after the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act when forest moved from the state list to the concurrent list. The next topic is Rents 20, Rent 21 Renewables 2022 Global Status Report. So as per the report, India was ranked second in the new solar water heating capacity addition 
India was ranked third in hydropower capacity addition and fifth in ethanol production. So initiatives taken by India in renewable energy sources are Pradhan Mantri Kisan Urja Suraksha Evam Uttam Mahabhiyan Kusum Scheme, Solar Park Scheme, National Policy on Biofuels 2018. So these were some of the initiatives. The next topic is Electricity Promotion Renewable Energy through Green Energy Open Access Rules 2022. So these rules are notified by the Ministry of Power. So as per the rules, even small consumers can purchase renewable power from 100 kilowatts. So transparency is increased in this in the approval of um, companies and green certificates are given to the consumers if they consume green energy. The next topic is Bureau of Indian Standards formulates performance standards for electric vehicles batteries. So some standard specifications for lithium ion battery and electric vehicles are published by Bureau of Indian Standards. The next topic is 11th World Urban Forum. So 11th World Urban Forum is the premier global. This World Urban Forum is a premier global conference on sustainable urbanization. So it is established in 2001 under the United Nations to examine the rapid urbanization and its impacts on communities, cities, economies, climate change and policies. So 11th meeting was held in Poland. The next topic is CDRA. So CDRA is Coalition for Disaster Resilient Infrastructure. So it was launched in 2019 by Indian Prime Minister at United Nations Climate Action Summit to promote resilience of infrastructure to climate and disaster risk, ensuring sustainable development. The next topic is Azoxanthalate Corals. So these are the group of corals that are that do not contain zooxanthellae. So it provides this zooxanthellae provides food to the corals. So these azooxanthellates corals does not contain the zooxanthellae and derive nourishment and food from capturing different forms of plankton but not from sun. Next topic is Nanchoga. So mammoth means very large elephants like species. So in Canada, baby mammoth remains were discovered in the permafrost region and it is named as Nunchoga. Next topic is bamboo dwelling bat in Meghalaya. So in Meghalaya harbors, the highest bat diversity is found. So a bamboo dwelling bat was discovered in Nong uh, Kelam Wildlife Sanctuary in Meghalaya. The next topic is heat waves 2022 causes impacts and way forward for Indian agriculture. So uh, when the temperature goes beyond the normal temperature then heat waves is caused. So due to anti-cyclones and absence of western disturbances heat waves are caused. So impacts are yellowing or forced maturity of crops, flower drop, moisture stress, loss of appetite. So these are the impacts. The next topic is tectonic linkage to great as Assam earthquake. So here the eastern Himalayas and the Indo-Burban ranges formed deformation of the earth crust. So deformation is there in the eastern Himalayas and the Indo-Burman crust. So and this deformation is located in the Assam region. So Assam has experienced the great Assam earthquake in 1950. The next topic is Moa Syndrome and Cherrapunji. So these both places got more rainfall, will get more rainfall in a day than the entire country's average rainfall in the June month. So these both places are located on the uh, windward sides of the Meghalaya's East Kasi Hills district. So these places are locked by three sides and southwest winds are blocked by these mountains and Bay of Bengal monsoons get stuck at this place and heavy rains fall.
start the first topic is ipbs assessment report sustainable use of wild species so ipbs full form is intergovernmental science policy platform on biodiversity and ecosystem services ipbs is an independent intergovernmental body that strengthens science policy interface for conservation and sustainable use of biodiversity IPBS report provides insights analysis and tools to establish more sustainable use of wild species of plants animals fungi and algae around the world it identifies five broad categories of practices in the use of wild species they are fishing gathering logging terrestrial animal harvesting and observing the next topic is project tiger it is launched in 1973 by the ministry of environment forest and climate change so it is launched to restore the tiger pop- tiger population and strengthen conservation of the tigers so under the project tiger the first interstate tiger location project took place in 2018 to increase the tiger population in odisha state but due to the lack of tiger reserve management due to lack of monitoring protection and due to competition from the existing female tigers from the core area the first relocation project was failed so recently uh, guru ghazi das national park in chatisgarh and thamor pingla wildlife sanctuary in chatisgarh were approved as the, uh, the 53rd tiger reserve so let's know more about the tigers it is indian tiger or royal bengal tiger it is a national animal of india they are put in the conserved status of iucn's endangered list and schedule one of wildlife conservation act 1972 and appendix one on sites so india is a home to more than 70% of the global tiger population and maximum number of tigers are found in madhya pradesh followed by karnataka and uttarakhand and the tiger stripes are individually a unique one as same as the human fingerprints the next topic is impact of climate change on children so unicef international organization for migration george town university and united nations university have launched guiding principles for children on the move in the context of climate change they are the right of the children should be guaranteed the interest of the children should be given priority they have the right to be cared by their parents or caregivers and are not to be separated from them they have they should have access to education healthcare and social services the migrant children should be guaranteed a nationality etc so the children are exposed to vulnerability due to the climate change floods heat waves exposure to different types of pollution and extreme weather events children are exposed to physical psychological and emotional vulnerability the next topic is offshore wind energy so wind power is one of the fastest growing renewable energy technology so onshore wind energy means the power generated by the wind turbines located on land driven by natural movement of air so offshore wind energy is the energy generated from farms that are located over the oceans so recently ministry of new and renewable energy released strategy paper for establishment of offshore wind energy projects so it has identified 16 zones for harnessing offshore wind energy so according to the ministry of new and renewable energy india um, can generate 127 gigawatts of offshore wind energy with its 7600 kilometers of coastline the next topic is 
ground water contamination so world bank has released a report on ground water contamination with a title seeing the invisible a strategic report on ground water quality so as per the report 150 million people are exposed to dangerous levels of health impacts since 1970 and long term exposure to fluorine in drinking water may put 200 million people to skeletal fluorosis and the states of West Bengal, Jharkhand, Bihar, Uttar Pradesh, Assam, Manipur, Chhattisgarh are mostly affected by arsenic contamination of the groundwater. And in Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Gujarat and Rajasthan, fluoride contamination is wildly prevalent. And 16 states have reported with a high contamination, high uranium contamination groundwater. So, some common diseases caused due to groundwater are due to arsenic contamination in groundwater, black food disease, painful and disfiguring skin conditions, kidney disease, heart and lung diseases and multiple cancers develop. And due to fluoride contamination in groundwater, skeletal fluorosis, dental fluorosis etc. occur. Due to manganese contamination, impairment of intellectual developments occur. And due to uranium contamination in groundwater, kidney diseases and bone cancer may occur. And due to nitrate contamination, baby blue syndrome is caused. So some initiatives taken by uh, India to ensure quality of groundwater are the Central Groundwater Board is set up to monitor groundwater quality. And next is Atal Bhujal Yojana was set up for sustainable groundwater management and Bureau of Indian Standards has prescribed units for contaminants in drinking water. And control of industrial pollution was made a provision under Water Act of 1974 and common effluent treatment plans were established for small scale industrial units. The next topic is Aridity Anomaly Outlook Index. So this index is issued by the Indian Meteorological Department. As per the report, at least 85% of districts are facing arid conditions across India. So as per the report, 63 districts out of 756 districts are non-arid while 660 districts are facing aridity. So 196 districts are facing severe degree of dryness and out of this 65 are in UP. So Bihar and the first highest num number of districts with aridity is Uttar Pradesh with 65, degree, 60, 65 districts and Bihar is the second highest number of districts with, 30, with 33 districts experiencing arid conditions. So the causes of drought con situations in India are the increased intensity and frequency of heat waves and limited irrigation coverage, inadequate water availability for irrigation, uneven distribution of rainfall and considerable, considerable variations in rainfall due to El Nino etc. So some initiatives taken by India to manage drought is National Agricultural Drought Assessment and Monitoring System, Next, uh, Drought Early Warning System, Atmanirbhar Krishi App, and next is Water Policy Act of uh, Policy of 2012. Relief measures were taken and draft mitigation programs like Atal Bhujal Yojana, Jal Shakti Abhiyan, Pradhan Mantri Krishi Shinchai Yojana, Integrated Watershed Management Program, etc. were initiated. The next topic is Access to Clean and Healthy Environment as Universal Human Right. So United Nations General Assembly has passed a resolution that recognizes right to clean, healthy and sustainable environment as a human right. So India has also voted in favor of this right. So some constitutional provisions related to environment and human rights in Indian constitution are Article 21. So it guarantees fundamental right to life and right to an environment which is free of danger of diseases and infection are also included in this right. Next is Article 48A. This article talks about protection and improvement of environment to safeguard forests and wildlife of the country. And next is Article 51A Clause G. 
so it tells that it is the duty of every citizen to protect and improve the natural environment the next topic is un ocean conference so the first un ocean conference was held at un headquarters in new york so over 150 countries collectively agreed to scale up science based innovative actions to address the si uh, ocean emergency supporting the implementation of sustainable development goal number 14 that is life below water and the second un ocean conference was held at lisbon and ended with the Lisbon Declaration with the title Our Ocean, Our Future, Call for Action. So under this de uh, declaration, it states that, uh, so the declaration has made voluntarily com voluntary commitment to conserve and protect at least 30% of the global ocean within marine protected area and other area based conservation measures by 2030. The next one is ozone hole over the tropics so if the area of ozone loss is larger than 25 percent of area when compared to the undisturbed atmosphere then it is called all season ozone height sorry all season ozone hole so uh, scientists have revealed all season ozone hole in the lower stratosphere in tropical area which is greater than the antarctic ozone hole so some initiatives to protect ozone layer are Vienna Convention on Protection of Ozone Layer in 1985. In 18, 1987, Montreal Protocol was adopted to protect the ozone layer. And in 2016, Kigali Agreement was adopted to achieve 80% reduction in hydrofluorocarbons by 2047. The next topic is 5 wetlands get international important tag. They are... Kirikili Bird Sanctuary in Tamil Nadu. It is a home for uh, cormorants, egrets, uh, grey heron, open bill stock, darter, spoon bill, white ib ibnis, night herons, grapes, grey pelicans, etc. Next is Palli Karanai Marsh Reserve Forest. So, in, it is also in Tamil Nadu. It is one of the last remaining natural wetlands of Chennai. Next is Pichavaram Mangrove in Tamil Nadu. It is one of the largest mangrove ecosystems located between the estuaries of Vellur and Kollidam rivers. So, there are trees that are permanently rooted under the, the mangrove uh, trees here are permanently rooted under few feet of water. The next is Pala wetland. It is the largest wetland in Mizoram. So, um, it is a 16 kilometer deep lake and supports rich diversity of animal species. So, sambar deer, barking deer, wild boars, hulok gibbon, fires, leaf monkey are found here. The next one is Sakya Sagar wetland in Madhya Pradesh, created from Maniar River. In 1918, it is located near the Madhav National Park in Shivpuri district. The next topic is radiocarbon dating or carbon-14 dating. So, every living organism observes absorb carbon including radioactive carbon-14. So, when they die, they stop observing carbon and the radioactive carbon-14 starts decaying based on this decay. They determine how long something was dead. So, but due to the burning of fossil fuels in ra uh, the radioactive carbon 14 levels in the atmosphere is decreasing and this is adversely affecting the radiocarbon dating. The next topic is right to repair. So, right to repair movement calls for manufacturers to make authentic parts available to the consumers so that they can get their device repaired from independent shops or the, any other third party so recently department of consumer affairs set up a community on the right to repair to emphasize on lifestyle on for the environment movement that is life movement to sustainable usage of farming equipment mobile phones automobiles and automobile equipment so it is already recognized in the us uk and european union the next topic is green energy open access rules 
So, Ministry of Power has notified the Green Energy Open Access Rules. The main objective of this rules is to accelerate renewable energy program. So, all the industries, consumers and small scale industries are called to demand green energy and they will be provided green certificates if they consume green energy. The next topic is Great Indian Bustard. So, Great Indian Bustards are found in arid and semi-arid grasslands. Rajasthan has the highest population. Desert National Park Sanctuary in, uh, in Rajasthan, Nalia of Gujarat, Varora of Maharashtra and Bellari of Karnataka are the important sites of Great Indian Bustards. So, many Great Indian Bustards are dying by shrinking, uh, striking to the high power lines web so supreme court also ordered that rajasthan and gujarat states to make high tension power lines underground but any action is not taken till now the next topic is monarch butterflies so it is the most recognizable butterflies in the world in North America, millions of monarch butterflies undertake longest migration due to the loss of habitat, increased use of herbicides and pesticides and climate change. These species are decreased. IUCN has added this butterfly to red list of threatened species and categorized it as endangered. The next topic is snow leopard. Snow leopards are kept in Schedule 1 of Indian Wildlife Act of 1972 and vulnerable status of IUCN Red List. So there are mainly found, these snow leopards are mainly found in the mountains of Central Asia covering Ladakh, Himachal Pradesh, Uttarakhand and Sikkim. According to the study of the Zoological Survey of India, snow leopards regulate the population of herbivorous species like Siberian ibex and blue sheep and the absence of snow leopards causes depletion in the vegetation cover. The next topic is light mantled albatross. So Phobiatria fal falpid breed. So these are the seabirds found in the southern and cold Antarctic regions. So it is found for the first time near Rameshwaram coast. The next topic is Global Platform for Disaster Risk Reduction 2022. So the seventh session was organized by UN Office for Disaster Risk Reduction in Bali. The next topic is Coastline Erosion. So erosion, coastline erosion is the long-term removal of sediments and rocks along the coastline due to the natural process or due to human activities. Ministry of Earth Science recently informed that 34% of coastline is under varying degrees of er erosion. So West Bengal has suffered the most erosion followed by Kerala, Tamil Nadu and Gujarat. And according to the National Assessment of Shoreline Changes along Indian coast, human activities like mining, offshore dredging, etc. have triggered coastal erosion. Next topic is India's largest floating solar power pipe projects. So 100 megawatts floating solar power project is launched in NTPC Ramagundam in Telangana. The next topic is Asia Pacific Sustainability Index 2021. So it is released by Knight Frank which is a global property consultant. So as per the index, India is the sixth largest country in Asia Pacific to issue green bonds in 2021. Four Indian states are present in the top 20 sustainable cities. They are Bangalore, followed by Delhi, Hyderabad and Mumbai. Next topic is India's updated NDCs. NDCs means nationally determined contributions. So nationally determined contributions are the each country's efforts and goals to limit the climate change and global warming as per the Paris Agreement. They are to reduce first is to reduce the emission intensity by 45% by 2030 from 2005. The next one is to achieve electric power capacity from non-fuel based energy resources by 50% and to create additional carbon sink through addition of forest and recover. The next topic is 
energy conservation amendment bill 2022 so lok sabha was recently has recently passed this bill so the key provisions of this bill are first is uh, it has made the consumption of energy from non fossil fuels mandatory for commercial and industries and next is it introduced energy conservation and sustainable building codes next one is amendment is done in motor vehicles act 1988 to conserve energy sources thus it introduced carbon trading and this will increase private sector investments in clean energy ensure faster decarbonization the next topic is ethanol blending so ethanol is a biofuel it is blended with petroleum to reduce carbon emission prime minister recently said that the target of 10% ethanol blending with petrol has been accomplished before the target period itself and india has now kept a target of 20% of ethanol blending with the petroleum by 2025 the next topic is ocean thermal energy so it is a process of producing energy by harnessing temperature differences between ocean surface water and the deep ocean waters so the national institute of ocean technology established india's first ocean thermal energy conversion plant so this plant will now uh, convert the low temperature thermal desalination based on based desalination plant for the conversion of sea water into potable water next topic is coastal region conservation so coastal zone is the area between land and sea comprising of coastal land intertidal area coastal ecosystems mangroves coral reefs sea grass mud flats estuaries lagoons sand dunes etc so india has a coastline of 7516 kilometers and there are nine coastal states or in our country so they are gujarat maharashtra goa karnataka kerala tamil nadu andhra pradesh odisha and west bengal so coastal regulation zones are four types they are the zone 1 comes to uh the zone one include ecologically sensitive areas and include mangroves national parks marine parks sanctuaries reserve forest wildlife habitat biosphere reserves etc zone two are the areas within existing municipal limits with roads and infrastructure zone three are the areas within municipal limits or other uh urban areas with no proper infrastructure and zone 4 is the areas from low tide line to 12 km nautical miles on the sea ward side and inland water influenced by the tides the next concept is earth ganga so earth ganga focuses on creating economic livelihood opportunities to sustain the activities under the namami gange project so Uh, several new initiatives were launched under the earth ganga they are jalaj jalaj involves setting up of small shops or floating mobile centers to promote livelihood on the banks of river ganga next is uh, under sahakar ganga gram program 75 villages in five states are promoted natural farming among the farmers cooperatives under the brand ganga next is tourism related portal uh, i am avatar was also launched to promote livelihood opportunities the next topic is new ramsar sites so 26 wetlands were added to ramsar sites and now we have 75 ramsar sites so covering 13 lakh 26677 hectares so those 26 sites are um here in this map you can see so yes so here first is shalbag wetland okay so shalbag wetland conservation reserve and 
Hyam Wetland Conservation Reserves in Jammu and Kashmir. Next is Pala Wetland in Mizoram, Tampara Lake Hirak, uh, Hirako Reservoir, Ansupa Lake and Satkosia George are in Odisha. Next is 13 sites from Tamil Nadu are under the new Ramsar site list. They are uh, Suchindram, sorry, Suchindram Terur Wetland Complex, Vudu, Vuduvur Bird Sanctuary, Kanjikarakulam Bird Sanctuary, Chitragudi Bird Sanctuary, Pichavaram Mangroves, Pallikaranai Marsh Reserve Forest, Kirikili Bird Sanctuary, Udayamarthandapuram Bird Sanctuary, Vedantangal Bird Sanctuary, Vellore Bird Sanctuary, Dembanur Wetland Complex, Gulf of Mannar, Marine Biodiversity Reserve, Kutankulam Bird Sanctuary. So all these are the 13 wetlands present in Tamil Nadu. Next is Rangatittu Bird Sanctuary in Karnataka, Nanda Lake in Goa, Tanegrik in Maharashtra and Yashwan Sagar, Sirpur Wetland, Sakya Sagar Wetland in Madhya Pradesh. So all these are the new Ramsar sites added in the Ramsar list. So coming to the next topic, Coalition for Disaster Resilience infrastructure so india has signed headquarter agreement with cdri that is coalition of disaster resilient infrastructure so the headquarters agreement is an agreement between international organization and host state to determine the privileges and immunities necessary for good functioning the next topic is har ghar jal so har ghar jal is a flagship program implemented by jal jeevan mission under the ministry of jal shakti so in uh, ministry of jal shakti with the partnership of the states and union territories to ensure tap water connection in every rural household by 2024 goa has become the first state and dadra and nagar haveli daman and diu has become the first union territory to get first har jal har ghar jal certified state and union territory the next topic is center notifies india's 31st elephant reserve so agastya malay elephant reserve in tamil nadu became 31st elephant reserve karnataka has highest number of elephants followed by assam and kerala the next topic is india's virtual herbarium so herbarium is the place where dried uh, specimens of the plants are stored so india's indian virtual herbarium is the database of dried plants that mean maximizes the usefulness of the collection the next topic is indian um, national water awards so these awards are launched by ministry of jal shakti so it aims to sensitize the public about the importance of water and motivates them to adopt the best water usage practices the next topic is ozone layer so the u.s national oceanic and atmospheric administration found that the concentration of overall ozone depleting substances in the mid latitude stratosphere in 2022 are in the same amounts that was observed in 1980 the national oceanic and atmospheric administration NOAA, ozone depleting gas index tracks the concentrations of ozone depleting um, chloride and bromine so these ozone depleting substances are long-lived man-made chemicals which destroys the ozone layer the montreal protocol works for the protection of this ozone layer the next topic is per and per fluoro fluoroalkyl substances so these are the chemicals that have strong carbon fluorin bonds and do not degrade easily in the environment and these are referred as forever chemicals their production and use are eliminated by many countries a new research suggests that rainwater around the world is contaminated by this pfas next topic is la nina conditions enter third year sixth time since 1950 so la nina is a weather pattern observed when the sea surface temperature gets east uh, gets um, sea surface temperature in the eastern equatorial pacific gets comparatively colder than the normal so as per the indian meteorological department data la nina conditions were present from september 2020 and it has now entered the third year and it is classified as the triple dip la nina 
so generally el nina and la nina occur every 4 to 5 years and el nina is the most frequent than la nina so due to the presence of la nina conditions we get better monsoon rains in india intense hurricanes and cyclones are also caused in atlantic and bay of bengal regions and also peru and equatorial region equator region and are affected with the droughts and heavy floods in africa high temperature in western pacific and indian ocean the next topic is arctic amplification so it if the temperature in the arctic region rapidly increases than rest of the polar regions then it is called arctic amplification so as per the report arctic is the is heating up four times as fast as rest of the world next topic is strong thermal emission velocity enhancement so these are auroras like aurora like phenomena that leads to purple streak of lights these appear significantly at the lower height in the atmosphere than the auroras so these were first appeared in 2017 in new zealand canada alaska and uk between october to february and are continuing next is zombie ice so it is the massive greenland ice sheet and is melting rapidly which may lead to the rise in the global sea level by at least 10 inches the next is tonga volcano so the volcano volcanic eruption in tonga is likely to add up global warming and depletion of earth's ozone layer as per the new study next topic is climate change and women so international center for integrated mountain development has released state of gender equity and climate change in south asia and hindu kush himalayas report so due to the climate change many of them went down to poverty and financial burdens and ends up in domestic violence human trafficking sexual violence child marriage and other forms of violence and due to the climate change approximately 80 percent of the people were displaced many women have lost their opportunities of health and education so women are directly affected by the climate change the next topic is extreme weather events so due to the rising global temperature severe extreme weather events are experienced around the world so recent droughts in europe and floods in pakistan are the some are some examples the next topic is air pollution policy so the center has set up a new target of 40 percent reduction in the particulate matter concentration in 123 cities covered under the national clean air program by 2026 so air quality standards are measured using 12 parameters so those 12 parameters are carbon monoxide nitrogen dioxide sulfur dioxide pm 2.5 particular matter to 10 and ozone lead ammonia benzo pyrene benzene arsenic nickel so all these are the 12 parameters to measure the air quality the next topic is cheetah reintroduction so eight wild african cheetahs that are five female and three male from namibia were introduced in kuno national park in madhya pradesh under the project cheetah so it is the world's first international large wild carnivore translocation project the next topic is plant genetic resources for food and agriculture so plant genetic resources are any part of plants like seeds fruits cutting pollen etc from which plants can be grown so to conserve use and manage plant genetic resources for food and agriculture an international agreement was made and it was called international treaty on plant generic resources for food and agriculture so this treaty is also known as a seed treaty so recently india hosted the ninth session of governing body of the international treaty on plant genetic resources for food and agriculture so the main aim of the treaty is to recognize the contribution of farmers to diver uh, to diversify of 
the crops that feed the world establishing the global system to provide farmers plant breeders and scientists with access to plant genetic material and ensuring that recipients share benefits they derive from their use of these genetic materials the next topic is blue transformation so it is the effort to secure the maxim uh, mag uh, to secure the maximize the con and maximize the contributions of aquatic food systems and securing them by using the knowledge of emerging technology and practices so food and agriculture organization has released a document titled blue, blue transformation roadmap 2022 to 2030 so the main their main objectives are to reduce global fish loss and waste by half by 2030 and next is uh all illegal unreported and un- unregulated activities should be f- phased out and the third one is significantly increase global per capita fish consumption etc so the steps taken by india towards blue transformation are pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana centrally sponsored scheme on blue revolution fisheries and aquaculture infrastructure development fund matsya setu apps national policy on marine fisheries 2017 the next topic is breakthrough agenda report 2022 so it is released by international energy agency and the international renewable energy agency and the un climate change high level companions the next topic is world water development report 2022 so it is released by UN- unesco as per the report there is a sharp rise in f- fresh water withdrawal from streams lakes aquifers and human made reservoirs leading to water square- scarcity in different parts of the world next topic is one water approach so one water approach also called as integrated water resources management so under this system water is recycled and reused several times so it can help to combat water and urban ecology challenges the next topic is urban water body information system so it is launched by the ministry of housing and urban affairs so it will provide satellite images of water bodies to various cities to plan this rejuvenation The next topic is Swachh Sujal Pradesh. So Swachh Sujal Sujal Pradesh certificate is given to Andaman and Nicobar Islands. Next topic is Jal Doot app. So uh, this app will help in identifying groundwater level in selected villages. So it is launched by the Ministry of Rural Development. next topic is global alliance for industry decarbonization so it aims to accelerate net zero ambitions and decarbonization of industrial value chain international renewable energy agency with partnership of cements and energy and b com- uh, and 13 com- companies including tata steel uh, jindal steel works have launched this alliance Next topic is memorandum of understanding between International Solar Alliance and International Civil Aviation Organization. So both have signed memorandum of understanding to keep a check on the growth of carbon dioxide emissions in the sector. The next topic is United United in Science report. So as per the report the global fossil carbon dioxide emissions in 2022 returned to the pre pandemic levels of 2019 so 2015 to 2021 were warmest on the record and climate change made extreme heat and floods worse in 2022 next is global ocean observing systems report card 2022 so this report is given by the world meteorological department organization So next is digital monitoring reporting and verification systems. So these systems are the inter- are introduced to track the reductions in the greenhouse gas emissions to meet the climate change goals. So these systems are based on uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, blockchain, smart sensors, drones, etc. The next topic is 
carbon capture and storage so to car uh, the carbon dioxide produced by power generation or industries is captured transported and stored in deep underground to red to reuse it in the future and to reduce carbon emissions so norway is building world's first open access carbon capture and storage infrastructure on norway norway's north sea coast the next topic is innovation roadmap of mission integrated biorefineries so biorefineries are the processing units that convert biomass into biofuels biochemicals bioenergy etc so india has launched mission integrated biorefineries under mission innovation to catalyze the research and development to make clean energy affordable attractive and accessible for all so recently india has also announced irmib that is the innovation roadmap of mission integrated biorefineries and the global clean energy action forum developed by co leads from brazil canada uk and european commission the next topic is renewable energy and jobs annual review 2022 report by irena so irena is the international renewable energy agency so this uh, renewable energy and jobs annual review report was released by international renewable energy agency and international labor organization so as per the report if india will create 500 gigawatts of non fossil fuel energy sources by 20, 2030 then it could create 3.4 million new job opportunities and india generates 18% of the global hydro power employment next is hybrid power plant so hybrid power plants are those power plants which generate electricity from two or more sources so it may be solar plus wind or solar plus hydraulic or solar plus biomass etc so recently adani green company has launched world's largest 600 megawatt solar power project and 150 megawatts wind power project in jaisalmer next topic is dark sky reserves so dark sky reserve is a place which is protected from artificial light interference so india has set up the first dark sky dark sky reserve at hanley in ladakh as a part of Changthang Wildlife Sanctuary. So this place has highest lake on the earth, that is the Somorini Somoriri Lake. The next topic is Montreal Protocol. So Montreal Protocol Convention was organized in nineteen eighty seven. So under this agreement, the government, scientists, and industries will work together to cut down ninety nine percent of all ozone depleting substances like chlorofluorocarbons and replace with hydrochlorocarbons, um, which do not destroy and replace with hydrofluorocarbons. which do not destroy the ozone layer but causes global warming the next topic is stockholm convention so persistent organic pollutants or pop are the chemical substances that that persists in the environment for a long time accumulate in humans and affect the human health or environment so to protect the human health and environment from pops a global treaty was signed between the countries called stockholm convention so other hazardous chemicals and waste conventions are basel convention so it was basel convention was established to control the trans for uh, trans boundary movements of hazardous waste and their disposals so it is adopted in 1989 next is rotterdam convention it was established to regulate the chemicals and pesticides in international trade so it is adopted in 1998 the next topic is prior informed consent so if a country want to import pesticides or chemicals even if it is hazardous then they are imported under the prior informed consent under the rotterdam convention as it regulates the trade of hazardous chemicals and pesticides so iprodeon uh, and turbofos are the two herbi uh, hazardous chemicals so iprodeon is the fungicide used on fruits 
increase vegetables and it is toxic for reproduction next is turbophos is a soil in insecticide used on sorghum maize beet and potatoes india is one of the largest exporters of turbophos next topic is trees outside forest in india initiative so this initiative is launched to expand the tree coverage outside the traditional forest by 28 lakh hectares so it is launched under the ministry of environment forest and climate change and us agency for international development to enhance carbon sequestration support local communities strengthen climate resilience the next topic is rani pur tiger reserve so it is in uttar pradesh so it is uttar pradesh uh, fourth tiger reserve so it is located in tropical dry and deciduous forest and it is the home to fauna such as tree tigers leopards sloth bears etc the other three tiger reserves are in uttar pradesh are dudwana tiger reserve pilibit tiger reserve <coughs> Amar, amangan tiger reserve next is neela kurinji so it is an endemic flower which is found in western ghats and western ghats only and blooms in the regions of tamil nadu kerala karnataka so it grows at an altitude of 1300 to 2400 meters so it blooms once every 12 years so recently neela kurinji or kurinji flower has bloomed in the Chand- chandradona mountains chandradrona mountains after 12 years next is kritagya 3.0 so it is a national level hackathon organized by the indian council of agriculture research with national agricultural higher education project and crop sciences division so this initiative promote speed breeding from crop improvement to ensure overall sustainability and resilience in crop production in india The next topic is rule curve. So rule curve is the regulations that specifies quantum of storage of water or empty space to be maintained in the reservoir at the different times of the year based on the rainfall data for 35 years. So Mulla Periyar is the first reservoir to have rule curve implemented in the country. The next topic is green fins hub. so it is the first ever sustainable global marine tourism industry platform so it also protects the marine in environment and green fin hubs are launched by the unep along with uk based charity reef world foundation next topic is mission life so it is india led global mass movement that aims to protect and preserve the environment by every individual and through collective action so it is implemented under the ministry of environment forest and climate change so prime minister has also introduced the life mission at unfccc cop 26 meeting at glasgow the next topic is mainstreaming biodiversity in forestry so food and agriculture organizations has published a paper on forestry titled mainstreaming biodiversity in forestry in partnership with the center for international forestry research so mainstreaming biodiversity is the process of making policies and practices to conserve and promote sustainable use of natural resources and biodiversity next topic is urban flooding so urban flooding is defined as an excessive runoff in developed urban areas where the st- st- uh, storm water doesn't have anywhere to go due to poor capacity of drainage system amid flooding in major metropolitans of india the two cities that are uh, devanagari in karnataka and agartala in tripura have successfully curbed the urban flooding so the steps taken by these two cities are mapping of existence drainage system removal of illegal encroachment over drainage networks construction of storm water drains to curb the logging of rain water so these are about the out- urban flooding the next topic is mamla caves 
so this cave is the fourth longest cave in india with a total length of 7 kilometers so these are located in the east khasi hills of meghalaya so this cave is also known as the krem mola and is famous for its stalagmite and other rock formations so this cave is listed as one of the first 100 international union of geological sciences iogs so these are the first geology 100 geological sites in the world next is in nationally determined contributions synthesis report released by unfccc so it is released by unfccc next is um emissions gap report in the is the annual report released by unep so as per the emission gap report india is the third largest global uh, sorry greenhouse gas emitter the next topic is the coldest year of the rest of their lives report so this report is released by unicef so as per this report about 624 million children are exposed to one of the three other high heat measures like high heat wave duration high heat wave severity or extreme high temperatures the next topic is state of climate action report 2022 so it is released by the climate action tracker the next topic is climate transparency report so this report gives information of the climate performance of g20 so as per the report six g20 members including india did not sign the global methane pledge and at 1.5 degree centigrade rise in temperature globally g20 members can expect water scarcity and prolonged period of drought and less favorable agricultural conditions so in india in 2021 5.4% of its gdp is lost due to the extreme heat as per the report the next topic is world energy outlook so it is released annually by the international energy agency the next topic is greenhouse gas bulletin so it is uh, the report released by and uh, released annually by united nations world meteorological organization the next topic is state of mangroves 2022 so it is the annual report released by global mangrove alliance so as per the report the top 5 states and union territories with mangrove cover is west bengal gujarat andaman and nicobar islands andhra pradesh and maharashtra sundarbans are the largest mangrove forest of the world and it is spread over india and bangladesh the next topic is lead poisoning so lead is a naturally occurring toxic substance so it is also a by product of mining smelting and refining industries so as per the recent report prepared by niti aayog and council of scientific and industrial research the blood lead levels are higher in uh, bihar uttar pradesh madhya pradesh jharkhand chatisgarh and andhra pradesh it may affect brain development anemia nausea headache irritability and stomach ache tiredness premature birth etc so these are the effects of lead poisoning the next topic is green crackers so the crackers that are made without arsenic mercury barium and are not um, loud beyond a certain threshold are called the green crackers so these are produced by licensed manufacturers so the green crackers can cause 30% less air pollution and don't contain uh hazardous chemicals elements like barium nitrate next topic is compressed biogas so it is the compressed and purified biogas produced from waste or biomass sources like agricultural residue cattle dung etc so asia's first compressed biogas plant is inaugurated in sangroor in punjab the next topic is effects on of light pollution on migratory birds so the light pollution contribute to the deaths of the millions of birds from collision with buildings it may alter birds behavior animals and plants and it also harms human health and causes uh, sleep disorders diabetes and other problems the next topic is 
assisted natural regeneration so assisted natural regeneration is the active planting and restoration by the local people to help trees and natural vegetation recover from the barriers and threats so threats so recently conservation international report highlighted the needs of the assisted natural regeneration next topic is tiger relocation a tiger from ratambor tiger reserve near aravalli and vindhya plateau was shifted to sariska tiger reserve in rajasthan to increase the tiger reserve after seeking permission from national conservation tiger authority so to so the next one is so to increase the tiger's population okay so in the next topic is Kadabur Slender Loris Sanctuary so it is located in Tamil Nadu so it is the India's first sanctuary for slender loris so slender loris is mainly found in the tropical scrub and deciduous forest it spend most of their lifetime on its on the trees and are the insectivores so it is found only in the southern india and sri lanka so it is protected under the schedule 1 of wildlife protection act of 1972 The next topic is sloth bears. So sloth bear is an endemic to India and small number of small number are found in Nepal and Sri Lanka. So it is listed under the schedule 1 of Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 and is vulnerable on IUCN red list. The next topic is Durgavati Tiger Reserve. So Durgavati Tiger Reserve is in Madhya Pradesh as Panna Tiger Reserve will get submerged due to the linking of the Ken Betwa rivers. The Panna Tigers are shifted to the newly approved Durgavati Tiger Reserve. So other tiger reserves of Madhya Pradesh are Kanha National Kanha uh, Bandavgar Tiger Reserve, Panna Tiger Reserve, Tench, Satpura and Sanjay Dubri Tiger Reserves. Next is mining in aravallis so the mining of the major and minor minerals in aravalli hills was banned by the supreme court to restore the traditional ecological ecological value of the hills the next topic is kolar fields so the center has decided to revive gold mining at kolar fields in karnataka so it is operated by the bharat gold mines limited a public private sector undertaking so kgf is one of the world's deepest gold mines at the depth of 3000 meters The next topic is blue flag beaches. So blue flag beaches uh, certification, sorry, blue flag certification is awarded by the Denmark-based non-profit foundation for environmental education. So it is given based on the four categories. So they are um, environmental education and information, water quality, environmental management, safety and services. So at present, twelve beaches are certified blue flag. So they are. Uh, golden beach in odisha rushikonda beach in andhra pradesh radhanagar beach in andaman and nicobar islands eden beach in Rud- puducherry kovalam beach in tamil nadu thundi beach in lakshadweep kappad beach in kerala kadmat beach in lakshadweep uh, puduvedri and kasarko beach in karnataka G- uh, goghala beach in diu shivrajpur beach in gujarat so all these are the blue blue flag beaches of india the next topic is glyphosate so this is a herbicide that kills most plants so it is used to clear weeds from agricultural fields and prevent the plants from making plant growth proteins so government has restricted the use of glyphosate except for pest control operations so this herbicide is majorly used in orchards and plantation crops The next topic is new island in Pacific Ocean. So after the eruption of the Tonga volcano, new island was formed in the Pacific Ocean. Next topic is twenty seventh conference of parties or COP twenty seven, COP twenty seven. So it was held in Sharm El Sheikh in Egypt. So the targets of COP twenty seven are set by Egyptian presidency. Are first is to adopt. to adopt transformative adaptation agenda to provide mobilize and deliver climate financing for developing countries to avoid backsliding on commitments and pledges to ensure transition based on low emission and climate resilience development and action to clarify support for loss and damage so conference of parties is the supreme decision making body of UNFCCC to address the climate changes The next topic is India and COP twenty seven. So 
India has submitted its strategy to protect the climate called Long Term Low Emission Development Strategy to UNFCCC. The next topic is climate financing. So, finance. So, according to the UNFCCC, climate finance is the funding of local, national, or transnational funding from uh, per public, private, and alt uh, alternate sectors to support and mitigate climate change. Next topic is. Adaptation Gap Report 2022. So, it is released by the UNEP. The next topic is Methane Emission. So, Global Methane Assessment 2030 Baseline Report was released by the Climate and Clean, Ener Clean Air Coalition and UNEP. So, methane is 80 times greater than that of the carbon dioxide. It is responsible for the growth of half of the tropospheric ozone uh, zone formation. So, it is this methane is responsible for the growth of half of the tropospheric zone formation okay so due to this methane it doesn't allow the carbon dioxide uh, in the upper layer of atmosphere to go beyond that so that is the reason global warming is increasing on the earth's surface the next topic so india is among the top five methane emitters in the world the next topic is dynamic groundwater resource assessment 2022 so under union ministry under ministry of jal shakti uh, um, the dynamic groundwater resource assessment report for the year 2022 was released so as per the report in 67.8 percent areas groundwater extraction is less than 60 70 percent and in 12 percent 12.1% area, groundwater extraction is between 70% and 90%. And in 4% areas, groundwater extraction is between 90 to 100%. And in 14.1% area, groundwater extension exceeds the annual replenishable groundwater recharge. And in 2% area, major part of groundwater is brackish or saline. So, and the states with the highest overexploitation of groundwater are Punjab with 76.5%, Rajasthan with 72.5%, Haryana with 61.5%, Delhi with 44%, Tamil Nadu with 31% and Karnataka with 21%. So, some initiatives taken by India to control the groundwater is uh, Central Groundwater Board, Atal Bhujal Yojana, Manrega, Central Groundwater Authority, Pradhan Mantri Krishi Shinchai Yojana, Jal Shakti Abhiyan. The next topic is glaciers and climate change. So according to the UNESCO's World Heritage Glacier Report, a third of global, uh, sorry, a third of glaciers among the World Heritage sites will disappear by 2050. The next topic is national bioenergy program so the generation of electricity and gas from organic matter is known as bioenergy so national bioenergy program has three sub schemes so they are waste to energy program biomass energy biomass program biogas program so it is launched under the ministry of new and renewable energy uh, energy so the next one is e-waste management rules 2022 so india is the third largest producer of electronic waste in the world after china and us so to reduce reuse and manage the e-waste ministry of environment forest and climate change has notified e-waste rules 2022 the next topic is right to repair so right to repair is a framework that requires the manufacturers to disclose the product details to customers so that they can repair themselves or through third parties rather than relying on the original producers. The next topic is Great Nicobar Mega Development Project. So under this project, International Container Transshipment Terminal, Military Civil Dual Use Airports, Solar Power Plant and Integrated Township is built. The next uh, topic is global forest declaration assessment report 2022 so as per the report deforestation rates has declined by 6.3 percent tree cover loss was decreased by six percent and green cover uh, sorry governance of forest and forest land is not yet strong enough the next topic is 
urban agriculture so urban agriculture are the agricultural practices in the urban and peri urban areas so uh, street landscaping vertical farming uh, for, uh, forest gardening rooftop gardens green walls urban uh, beekeeping greenhouse uh, aquaponics animal husbandry and backyard gardens are the different types of urban farming so many cities of india like mumbai delhi chennai bengaluru kolkata have adopted urban agriculture the next topic is national mission on natural farming so natural farming is a chemical free farming and livestock based so national farming in gujarat is 31.5% in andhra pradesh it is 28.8% in madhya pradesh it is 11% in kerala it is 7.9% in maharashtra it is 7.4% in uttar pradesh it is 6.2% in odisha it is 2.4% in jammu and kashmir it is 1.2% in himachal pradesh it is 0.9% in telangana it is 0.2% and in punjab it is 0.2% so benefits of natural farming are it discourages environmental exposure to pesticides and chemicals it builds healthy soil it helps combat erosion it fights the effect of global warming it supports water conservation and water health and it discourages algae blooms it supports animal health and welfare and encourages biodiversity the next topic is international year of millets so 2023 is declared as an international year of millets to raise the awareness about the importance of millets in food security and nutrition so before green revolution millets were one of the largest grown samples in india now the top 5 millet producing states are madhya pradesh gujarat karnataka rajasthan and maharashtra so millets benefit consumers in terms of health benefit farmers as they improve soil quality consume less water and are resistant to extreme weather conditions and millets are also helpful to for the ecosystem as they support zero hunger and promote sustainable consumption and production and support climate action the next topic is sites that is convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora so it is an international agreement between governments to ensure the international trade and wild animals and plants do not threaten their survival so cop 19 of sites was recently held in panama the next topic is biodiversity heritage sites so biodiversity heritage sites are the areas that are unique ecologically fragile ecosystems so they are spread over terrestrial co- coastal inland and main marine waters having rich biodiversity so tamil nadu has declared uh, aripatti and meenakshi puram villages in madurai districts as the first biodiversity heritage sites in india so aripatti village has several species of birds like lagger falcon shaheen falcon and bone lilies bone lily bone lilies uh, eagle and it is also a home for indian pangolin slender lorries and pythons so this anaikondan tank built during the region of pandian kings in 16th century is present in the village and is and megalithic structures rock cut temples tamil brahmi inscriptions jain beads etc are part of this village the next topic is climate and development an agenda for action so it is released by world health organization next is state of climate in asia 2021 report is published by world meteorological organization next is provisional state of the global climate in 2022 report is released by meteorological organization The next topic is global carbon budget 2022 report is released by global carbon project next green energy open access portal so under this portal consumers can access green power easily through transparent procedures the next is himalayan yak so recently food safety and standards authority of india has recently Uh, accepted himalayan yak as a food animal so food animals are the animals that are raised and used for food production and consumption so himalayan yak is also known as mountain cow so it is in iucn status 
it is in the vulnerable status of iucn the next topic is acyclofenac so acyclofenac is a, a veterinary veter, veterinary painkiller and due to the usage of this drug on animals the vulture population in 2006 has drastically uh, dramatically decreased across asia so recently in indian veterinary research institute has demanded the ban of using acyclofenac in cattle next is fujiwara effect so if two cyclones or storms interact with each other then it is called fujiwara effect so these storms are formed around same time in same ocean region and the distance between two centers of storms is or ice is less than 1400 kilometers the next is drought monitoring tool so it is a new satellite based drought monitoring tool which provides data and safeguards measure in south asia so it will help farmers to obtain drought tolerant seeds develop supplementary irrigation and apply potassium nitrate that can help seedlings cope better with dry conditions the next topic is china's china develops perennial rice variety so this type of rice variety it uh, in this type of rice variety it is not necessary to plant the rice saplings every year so this pr23 variety if planted once can yield for eight consecutive harvest across four years so the rice in india is a karif crop it needs high temperature approximately 21 degrees to 37 degrees throughout life period of crop and it is it needs high humidity prolonged sunshine and an assured water supply so the the soil with clay and organic matter which has water retention capacity that is the alluvial soil is ideal and india is the world's second largest producer of rice after china and india is the largest exporter of rice is cop 15 to the united nation convention on biological diversity cbd so 15th cop or cbd cbd was held in montreal in canada so it was chaired by china and hosted by canada so the major objectives of this summit is to adopt a climate uh, adopt a global biodiversity framework which will replace the he biodiversity targets that is expired in 2020 so here the main objectives of this he biodiversity are to raise awareness about the value of biodiversity to incorporate biodiversity value into the national and local development and poverty reduction strategies and to eliminate harmful incentives and subsidies so this he biodiversity target was expired in 2020 so in this meeting in this cop 15 meeting they have adopted conming montreal global biodiversity framework so the main objective of this conming montreal global biodiversity framework is to address biodiversity loss restore ecosystem and protect indigenous rights so to achieve this target four long term goals were introduced so they are to reduce the rate of extinction of all species by 2050 sustainable use of management uh, sustainable use and management of biodiversity and fair sharing of the benefits like digital sequence information on genetic resources and to provide adequate means to least developed and small islands and developing states so that they can implement their targets better the next topic is world restoration flagships so un general assembly has declared the years 2021 to 2030 as the united nation decade on ecosystem restoration so recently the un decade on ecosystem restoration has declared first 10 world flagships restoration flagships at the sidelines of cop 15 of cbd so those 10 flagships are global contribution broad engagement many types of activities benefits to nature and people addresses cause and of degradation knowledge in knowledge integration measurable goals loans and land or seascape context monitoring and management policy integration so um under this different countries have introduced flagship initiatives so they are trinational atlantic forest pack under the argentina brazil and paraguay and 
these countries are to restore 15 million hectares of degraded forest by 2050 next is abu dhabi marine restoration in uae uae it is to restore coral mangrove and sea grass in abu dhabi creating a safe place for dugong aquatic mammal next is great green wall for restoration and peace implemented by burkina faso djibouti eritrea ethiopia Uh, Mali, Mauritania, Niger, Senegal, Sudan, Chad did the aim to restore the savanna, grasslands and farmlands across 8000 kilometers belt of Africa known as Sahel. Next is Namami Gange implemented by India and it aims to rejuvenation of the India's sacred river Ganga. Next is multi country mountain flagships. So it is implemented by Uh, democratic republic of congo kyrgyzstan rwanda serbia uganda to protect mountain landscapes and safeguard mountain species like mountain gorillas and snow leopards next is small island developing states flagship implemented by vanuatu comoros saint lucia to restore sensitive ecosystems of island nations and safeguard wildlife and strengthen economies next is atlan dala conservation initiative it implemented by kazakhstan and aims to conserve and restore kazakhstan steppe semi desert and desert ecosystems across historical range of uh, saiga antelope next is central american dry corridor implemented by costa rica and salvan salveda gutenda guatemala honduras Nica- nicaragua panama so to th- these are implemented to restore 3 lakh hectares of drought strike and control so st- strike and central american farmlands and forest next is building with nature in indonesia so it is implemented by indonesia to naturally regenerate mangroves and protect in Indo- uh, indonesia's coastline against flooding next is shan shui initiative in china so it is implemented in china across china to restore 10 million hectares of ecosystem across china including forest green grasslands and waterways next topic is restoration barometer report 2022 so it is published by the international union of conservation of nature the next topic is updated red list of threatened species So IUCN has updated red list of threatened species in COP15 biodiversity conference in Canada they are dugong dugong is also known as sea cow they are only herbivorous marine man- mammals and feed on sea grass okay so they are fo- they are found in shallow coastal waters of india and western pacific oceans indian oceans and western pacific oceans So in India it is found in the Gulf of Mannar, Pak Bay, Kutch, Gulf of Kutch, Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So it is a state animal for Andaman and Nicobar Islands. So Tamil Nadu government has also announced India's first conservation reserve for dugongs in Pak Bay. So threats for dugong include um unintentional capture in fishing, gear in East Africa and poaching in New Caledonia and boat injuries and destructions of sea grass habitats in both locations so the next one is pillar coral so these are found throughout the caribbean from yucatan peninsula and florida to trinidad and tobago so since 1990 its population was shrunk down to 80% and moved from vulnerable to critically endangered threats include stony coral tissues loss diseases and beaching clo- caused by increased sea surface temperature and excess antibiotics uh, fertilizers and sewage next is abalone so these are the shellfish species so due to marine heat waves abalone diseases increased worldwide affecting black abalone in california mexico and green uh, ornia found in english channels to northwest africa and mediterranean sea so new threatened species in india are white cheek dancing frog so only it is only found in the small ranges in 167 kilometers of western ghats of 
Karnataka. So due to the pollution, climate change, diseases, pest, invasive species, it has kept into endangered category. Next is Andaman smooth horned shark. So it is found in Andaman Sea in eastern Indian Ocean off the coast of Myanmar, Thailand, Andaman and Nicobar Island. So it is kept under the vulnerable due to fishing pressure. The next one is Yellow Himalayan Fritillary. So it is a herby, um, herbaceous plant of lily family. So these are used in anti aesthetic ast and aesthetic and anti rheumatic febrifuge, galactogouge hemostatic of the limic oxytoxic so it is for you used for medical use purposes so it is mostly found in the himalayas of bhutan china india Myanmar, nepal and pakistan so due to the unorganized harvest over extraction unsustainable and premature harvesting of bulbs coupled with illegal hidden markets these are under the vulnerable category the next topic is nature-based solutions. So United Nations Environment Program has released State of Finance of Nature for Nature 2022 report. The next topic is adoption of solar energy in India. So under the scheme for development of solar parks and ultra mega solar power projects, 57 solar parks of capacity more than 39 gigawatts was sanctioned under the Ministry of New and Renewable Energy. Next is the initiatives taken by India to promote solar energy in India are International Solar Alliance, One Sun, One World, One Grid, Production Lens Incentive Scheme on National Program on High Efficiency Solar PV Modules, Kisan Urja Suraksha Evam Uthan Mahabhyan PM Kusum and the National Solar Mission. The next topic is Energy Conservation Amendment Act 2022. So this act amended the previous Energy Conservation Act of 2001. It provides framework for regulating energy consumption and promoting energy efficiency and energy conserv conservation. So the key objectives of Energy Conservation Amendment Bill are to enhance the scope of Energy Conservation Building Code to bring large residential buildings within the fold of energy conservation regime to establish carbon markets to increase members in the governing council of bureau of energy and efficiency to empower the state electricity regulatory commissions to make regulations for energy efficiency the next topic is carbon border adjustment mechanism so it is a plan made by the european union to tax the carbon intensive products or to tax the carbon generated products like iron and steel, cement, fertilizers, aluminium, electricity and hydrogen from 2026. So this plan was proposed in COP27 summit in Egypt but India has opposed it. Opposed it. So the significance of carbon border tax are to address carbon leakage issues, to encourage more rapid applications for renewable technology to incentivize non-European Union countries to increase their climate ambition, to ensure global climate efforts and upholding polluter space principle. The next topic is climate investment opportunities in India's cooling sector. So this is a report released by the World Bank. So due to heat waves in India, the temperature is drastically increasing in India. So to convert this into an opportunity and make sustainable initiatives in air cooling, equipment and innovations in farming, the World Bank has released this report. The initiatives made by the government to help people adopt to rising temperatures are India Cooling Action Plan 2019, International Solar Alliance, Lifestyle for Environment Movement, by 27, 2047, India to phase out ozone depleting hydrochlorocarbons. The next topic is polluted river stretches for restoration of water quality 2022 report. So it is released by the Central Pollution Control Board. As per the report, the total number of polluted rivers stretches from stretches polluted river stretches has fallen from 351 in 2018 to 311 in 2022 and the unchanged 
polluted rivers are kept in priority 1 and almost unchanged polluted rivers are kept in priority 2. So Maharashtra has highest number of polluted river stretches followed by Madhya Pradesh. The next topic is Global Status of Black Soil Report of Food and Agriculture Organization. So as per the report, the black soil is under threat. The black soil contains organic carbon matter up to 25 centimeters depth. The black color is due to the black soil. In the, the black color in the black soil is due to the process of melanization. So the black color is formed from black uh, from the organic matter of numerous dying roots of germaneous vegetation so it is called melanization process so in india black soil is spread mostly across interior gujarat maharashtra karnataka madhya pradesh on deccan lava plateau and malwa plateau next is arctic report card 2022 so it is re released by the u.s national oceanic and atmospheric administration so as per the report um, the arctic continues to warm more than twice as fast as the rest of the globe and mean sea surface temperature is rising and this is leading to the increase in the phytoplankton production of organic matter in oceans and persistent summer sea ice due to cooler surface waters at Chukchi, Ski, Chukchi Sea. The next topic is United Nations Water Summit on Groundwater 2022. So this summit was held in Paris and it uses United Nations World Water Development Report 2022 as a baseline. Next is Right to Repair Portal. So this portal was launched by Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Food and Public Distribution. The next topic is Renewable Energy Report 2022. So it is released by the International Energy Association. Next topic is Sinduja 1. So it is the Ocean Wave Energy Converter developed by IIT Madras. Next is sponge bleaching. So these are the simple aquatic animals with dense forests and skeletons. So these filters, these filter large quantities of water, capture small food particles, moves carbon from water column to sea floor, provides habitat for species such as crabs, shrimps and starfish. So New Zealand has recorded the largest ever sponge bleaching event. So like corals, they also uh, are prone to bleaching due to the heat stress. Next topic is Vren Babbler. So bird watchers discovered a new song word and named it Lisu Vren Babbler. So as it is found in the Lisu community of Ar Arunachal Pradesh. So they are the on they are only 10 to 15 centimeters long and are found in the southern Asia. The next topic is oldest known DNA. So scientists have discovered oldest known DNA fragments in the permafrost at northern edge of Greenland. So the study also reveals that high Arctic was much warmer and greener place than many places on the earth today. The next topic is bomb cyclone. So when a rapid pressure drop in the uh, drop when the rapid pressure drop is accompanied by the strong winds and can lead to severe weather including heavy snowfall strong winds and thunderstorms and it is called as bomb cyclone it occurs during winter months and most common in the mid latitudes like eastern us europe and asia the next topic is cyclone mandaus so Mandos is the slow moving cyclone that absorbs lot of moisture, carries large amount of rainfall. So Tamil Nadu and neighboring areas have experienced a heavy rainfall due to the cyclone Mandos. The next topic is Kalasa Banduri project. So it is constructed to divert water from two tributaries of Kalasa and Banduri of Mahadai river to Malaprabha river. So this project aims to construct several dams on river Maha Mandovi to facilitate drinking water for drought, drought hit towns in the northern Karnataka. The first topic is ozone hole recovery. So UN bagged ozone recovery assessment report 2022. So it stated that ozone layer is 
on track to recover within decades as harmful chemicals are phased out the next topic is cloud forest assets so the cloud forests are the mountain tropical forests generally found at the river head streams and mostly covered with the clouds so recently the cloud forest assets financing a valuable nature based solution report was released by the earth security so 90% of the cloud forest are found in 25 developing countries so these forests serve as the storage of clean water for communities industries and hydropower plants the next topic is the wildlife protection amendment act 2022 so this act is an amendment of the wildlife protection act of 1972 so this new act conserves and protect wildlife through better management of protected areas and by implementing sites efficiently so under this act chief wildlife warden will manage and protect sanctuaries in accordance with the management plans penalties for violations has increased and transfer and or transport of live elephants are allowed for the religious or any other purpose and the captive animals have to be surrendered to the chief wildlife warden and grazing or movement of livestock use of drinking water and household water by the local communities are allowed without any permit in the sanctuary and the central government has made regulations to prohibit the import trade possession or proliferation of invasive alien species so armed license is not to be renewed for the pers- people who are residing within 10, 10 kilometers of sanctuary except with the prior consent of the wildlife warden so new schedules are also introduced under this act they are the schedule 1 the schedule 1 highlights Uh, the highest level of protection is given to these species under the schedule 1 and a schedule 2 lesser level of protection is given under schedule 3 plant species are protected under schedule 4 specimens listed in appendices under sites are given so another important concept is sites so the convention on international trade in endangered species of wild fauna and flora so its main objective is to ensure, is to ensure that the international trade of wildlife species does not threaten the species so and other important concept is elephants so asian elephants are in the iucn endangered list project elephant is launched in 1991 to 92 and karnataka has the highest number of elephants followed by assam and kerala the next topic is forest conservation rules 2022 so national commission for scheduled tribes has introduced new forest rules and, and under this act advisory committees and regional empowered committees are established to advise union and state governments in matters involving the use of the forest land for non forest purposes so this act encourages people to raise vegetation and make comp- compensatory afforestation the next topic is human wildlife conflict so as per the cag report the comptroller and auditor general report around 6.5 lakh animals were dead in train accidents in the last 4 years and the report also stated that the schedule one species like tiger wolf elephant black bucks and uh, gangetic dolphins are found outside the protected areas so the protected areas are not recognized properly by the government so because of this uh, so many protected species under schedule one are under threat the next topic is fly ash utilization so fly ash is a particulate matter um that is produced by burning coal in the thermal power plants so it is composed of silica aluminum iron calcium oxygen lead and arsenic so generally in indian coal the ash content is more than other countries and the fly ash can cause land pollution air and water pollution so for the proper utilization of fly ash union ministry of environment and climate change has released notification on fly ash utilization so it can be utilized for the road construction for making bricks 
in the uh, bricks for construction of houses for making portland cement and it is also effectively used for removing mercury the next topic is samudrayaan mission so the main aim of this mission is to develop a self propelled manned submarine uh, sub submersible submarine called the matsya 6000 so it is launched under the ministry of earth sciences so under this initiative three human beings are sent deep down below uh, at the water depth of 6000 meters okay so other initiatives um, of india for blue economy are draft national policy for india's blue economy o smart scheme that is ocean services modeling application resource and technology scheme pm matsya sampada yojana uh, and the important resources like polymetallic nodules which have metals like copper nickel cobalt and manganese are found in the indian ocean so this these poly metallic nodules help in the electronic devices smartphones batteries and solar panels the next topic is joshimath land subsidence subsidence so joshimath is the important place in uttarakhand it acts like a gateway to famous pilgrimage sites like badrinath hemkund sahib and has four important mats and is strategically important place for indian armed forces so recently this joshimath region has declared as a land landslide and subsidence zone so here subsidence means gradual sinking of ground surface the next topic is large dams in india so as per the new study of the united nation around 3700 dams in india will lose 26% of that of their storage due to the accumulation of sediments sediments are nothing but the small particles like silt rocks and sand which come and uh, stay uh, at the ground surface of the dams so the next topic is international container trans trans shipment port so it is a development plan for the great nicobar island so under this public private partnership um, the great nicobar island will be developed with international airport international container trans shipment terminal township and area development and a power plant the next topic is urban forestry and urban greening in rylands report so as per this report 35% of the world's largest cities are built in the world's dry land and are facing high risk of social environmental and economic crisis and scarce rainfall and water sup- uh, supplies are leading to over exploitation of limited resources The next topic is sustainable agriculture in mangrove ecosystem initiative. So the main aim of this initiative is to restore the mangroves in the Sundarbans by planting mangrove trees around the shrimp ponds and to prevent erosion and observe storm surge and other extreme weather events. So mangroves has the capa- capacity to withstand the strong uh, the extreme weather events. like storm cyclones etc the next topic is first all india annual states ministers conference so it is held in bhopal and under this conference initiative are uh, some initiatives are introduced they are national framework on reuse of treated wastewater national framework for sedimentation management jal shakti abhiyan uh, catch the rain initiative and jal itihas portal that showcases water heritage structures for more than 100 years old and water vision park is proposed to establish the idea of afforestation to achieve water conservation the next topic is nature risk profile so nature risk profile aims at providing financial assistance to address and identify the nature related risk so it is launched under the U- united nation environment program and uh, snp global 
the next topic is wildlife conservation bond so it is also known as the rhino bond it is a sustainable development bond of 15 million 150 million dollars to protect and to protect increase the black rhino population in two protected areas in south africa the next topic is asian water bird census awc so it is a global international water bird census coordinated by the wetland international in india asian water bird census is jointly coordinated by the bombay natural history society and the wetland international and one important concept to remember here is about the bombay um, Bombay National History Society so Natural History Society so this one BNHS is formed in 1883 and is a non-governmental organization and is engaged in the conservation of biodiversity research and other important concept here is bond convention or convention on migratory birds this provides global platform for the conservation of migratory animals and their habitats the next topic is species in use so white tuffled royal butterfly is a rare butterfly species found in kerala and uh, agastya kudam and shendurni wildlife sanctuaries so it is protected under schedule 2 of the wildlife protection act of 1972 and the next important species is greater scope so it is a rare duck recently found in Loktak Lake in Manipur. So it is migratory bird found across Arctic and subarctic regions. So one important point here is Loktak Lake is a famous for Kerbal Lamjau National Park and Sangai Dancing Beer. The next topic is Neela Kurinji. So it is uh, it is under the Schedule 3 of Wildlife Act 1972. It is found in Shola forests of Western Ghats and blooms every 12 years. The plant is named after the famous uh, Kunti River which flows through the Kerala Silent Valley National Park. So the blue color of Kurinji has given to the Nilgiri Hills its name. So the next one is ram setu so it is also known as adam's bridge so it is a chain of limestone shoals connecting tamban island or rameshwaram island southeast coast of tamil nadu mannar of mannar island and northwest coast of sri lanka the next topic is munro turutu island so it is an island between ashtamudi lake and kallada river in kerala a study uh, by National Center of Earth Sciences has revealed that 39% of its land is lost in the past two decades and it is because of the construction of Tenmada Dam, Tenmala Dam under Kallada Irrigation Project. The next topic is Dark Sky Reserve. So Dark Sky Reserve is the uh, area which is away from the artificial light pollution and uh, sky is clearly seen without any artificial light interference in this area so the first dark sky reserve is in hanley in ladakh and the second dark sky reserve is in talakaveri in kodagu district of karnataka so it is also called as south india's hanley and one other important concept here is bottle scale bottle scales measures the night brightness the next topic is uranium contamination in groundwater. So as per the report given by the Central Groundwater Board, 12 states have uranium levels beyond the permissible limits in their groundwater. So Punjab is the worst affected followed by Haryana. So uranium contamination causes renal dysfunction, kidney disease, bone toxic, uh, toxicity, etc. Next is lakes in use. So Lake Victoria is the largest lake in Africa and it is shared by three countries, Tanzania, Uganda and Kenya. It is one of the freshwater lakes in the world. Next lake is Lake Chad. So it is a freshwater lake in the Sahelian zone of West Central Africa at conjunction of Chad, Cameroon, Nigeria and Niger. Next topic is Hawaii's 
Kilaya Volcano. So it is the active shield volcano located in Hawaiian Islands. The next topic is Standards and Labeling Program of Bureau of Energy Efficiency. So star rating is given to the appliances. So the lowest energy consumption appliances having uh, will have the highest star rating according to this uh, uh, as uh, according to the standards. The next topic is virtual power plants. So this virtual power plants use advanced software to react to the electric shortages with techniques like switching households batteries from charge to discharge mode etc. So it is a decentralized power generating unit especially for the electric vehicles or electric heaters. The next topic is disaster management plan for power sector. So it is released by the Central Electricity Authority to strengthen disaster mitigation, preparedness, emergency response and recovery efforts in the power sector. The next topic is global overturning circulation, GOC. So GOC means the equator word transportation of deep cold deep waters and the polar transformation of warm near surface waters so this transformation is called global overturning circulation the next topic is new plateau type discovered from maharashtra so a low latitude basalt plateau is discovered in the thane region of western Ghats. So it is a fourth type of plateau identified in this region. So this region is, al uh, is also a global biodiversity hotspot and UNESCO World Heritage Site in India. Next topic is e-waste management amendment rules 2023. So as per the global e-waste monitor report 2020, India is the world's third largest e-waste e generator after China and US and only 22% of 22.7% of total e-waste generated in 2019 to 20 was collected and recycled in India. So e-waste means used or expired electrical and electronic equipments like solar photovoltaic modules or panels or cells is dis, uh, is uh, launched is called the is called as the e-waste so e-waste has toxic substances like lead cadmium mercury beryllium hexavalent chromium which causes harmful effects on the human health which when mixed with the soil water or air so to protect the environment proper management of e-waste is needed so ministry of environment forest and climate change has notified e-waste management rules 2023 so as per this rules a new extended producer responsibility epr regime for e-waste recycling is introduced so epr certificates will be given for the companies which recycle their waste products and compulsory epr registration is required so every producer have to provide detailed information about their product and to reduce the use of hazardous substances like lead and mercury and cadmium epr is introduced and uh, environmental compensation is to be provided by the companies that don't meet their targets as per this e-waste amendment rules and central pollution board uh, control board shall monitor and verify the compliance of reduction of hazardous substances next topic is ethanol blending so ethanol is a biofuel that is obtained from the organic sources like sugar cane maize wheat etc so to reduce the carbon emission 10 percent of ethanol was added in petrol in 2022 india achieved average blending rate of 10 percent in petrol and now national policy on biofuels notified to make 20 percent of ethanol blended in petrol by 2030 so department of food and public distribution is the model uh, nodal department for promotion of fuel grade ethanol producing distilleries in the country the next topic is mangrove ecosystem so mangroves are the type of littoral plants found in the tropical and subtropical regions near the coastal areas so they are also called as coastal woodlands so tidal forest and mangrove forest uh, are 
present in this mango mangrove ecosystem so due to the climate change natural calamities deforestation reduction of fresh water and tidal water there uh, less tidal water flow there are they all these mangrove ecosystems are under threat so to increase the mangrove plantations along the coastline and on salt lines mishti scheme or mangrove initiative for shoreline habitat and tangible income scheme was introduced so in west bengal largest mangrove cover is present in 42.45% followed by gujarat with 23.66% andaman and nicobar islands with 12.39% um andhra pradesh with 8.12% maharashtra with 6.44% odisha with 5.04% tamil nadu with 0.90% goa with 0.52% karnataka with 0.20% and dadra and nagar haveli with 0.06% as per the forest survey of india so the highest mangroves are present in the west bengal followed by uh, gujarat andaman and nicobar islands andhra pradesh maharashtra odisha tamil nadu goa karnataka dadra and nagar haveli as per the forest survey report 2021 the next topic is aquaculture so aquaculture is a process of rearing breeding harvesting of aquatic species in the controlled environments like oceans lakes ponds and streams so india is the second largest aquaculture nation and india exports 70% of seafood Uh, and it is the third largest fish fish producer and fourth largest fish exporting country so one of the uh, due to lack of quality inputs like seeds feed etc used in aquaculture and limited fish species disease promoting conditions invasive species aquatic pollution climate change there is a large reduction in the quality and quantity of the seafood exports so to promote the aquaculture union ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairying have inaugurated three national programs for the aquaculture sector so they are genetic improvement program of indian white shrimp so that to encourage the indigenous species financial support is also promoted under the pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana and the next is phase 2 national surveillance program on aquatic animal diseases is launched to strengthen diseases resistance system and increase exports the next topic uh, the next one is launch of shrimp crop insurance product developed by icar ciba so here this uh, is launched to establish farmers access to insurance and double farmers income so there are three programs for the aquaculture sector released by the union ministry of fisheries animal husbandry and dairying so some other initiatives taken for aquaculture development are creation of independent ministry uh, conductive fdi policy policies fisheries and aquaculture infrastructure development fund pradhan mantri matsya sampada yojana e santa portal so e santa portal here is a e-commerce platform launched for the direct trade between small and marginal aqua farmers and exporters next topic is water sensitive cities so water sensitive cities are those cities that aim to achieve effective and efficient water conservation and water management so recently a research paper has highlighted the importance of water sensitive urban design and planning for cities in the global south so some initiatives taken by india for water sensitive cities are national mission for clean ganga um jal shakti ministry catch the rain initiative river cities alliance various national flagship urban missions like amrut smart cities swachh bharat mission hriday en nalam and traditional water conservation systems like alhar payan system of bihar cascade tanks of south india etc the next topic is sea level rise so world meteorological 
organization has released a report titled global sea level rise and implications facts and figures as per the uh, facts and figures report okay so according to this report sea level has rise to the highest level between 2013 and 2022 of 4.5 millimeters and sea level rise is not globally uniform and it varies regionally and the countries like india bangladesh china netherlands face the highest threat due to the sea level rise globally and the big cities like shanghai dhaka mumbai etc face the highest threat if the sea level rises the next topic is glacial lake outburst floods so recent study conducted by the scientists at newcastle university in uk revealed that about 3 million indians reside in the regions that are in threat to global lake floods so global lake outburst floods is a sudden release of the significant amount of water retained in the glacial lake so few important points to remember over here are the karakoram anomaly so it is the stability or anomalous growth of glaciers in the central karakoram region next is other important point is um third pole so third pole has areas of tibetan plateau himalayas hindu kush mountains uh, pamir and tian shan mountains so the melted water from third pole fills many of the asia's large lakes and rivers including indus brahmaputra ganges yellow and yangtze river the next topic is first synchronized vulture survey so kerala tamil nadu karnataka has begun the first synchronized vulture survey in select regions of western ghats so in india nine species of vultures are recorded and out of this four species are found in india uh, southern india so they are long billed vulture red headed vulture egyptian vulture and white rumped vulture so these are the these are concentrated in the nilgiri biosphere region so some important places are some important places to remember are the madhumalai tiger reserve it is located in tamil nadu vayanad wildlife sanctuary is located in kerala and nagar hole and bandipur tiger reserves are located in karnataka bir shikhagar wildlife sanctuary is located in haryana and this bir shikhagar wildlife sanctuary has the vulture conservation and breeding center called jata jatayu so the four drugs namely the diclofenac aciclofenac nimo nimosulide and ketoprofen these four drugs are uh, uh, are the drugs that lead to the drastic decrease in the vulture population the next topic is global assessment of soil carbon in grasslands so soil carbons in grassland report is released by the food and agriculture organization the next topic is organic farming certification so to check field level irregularities in organic farming ministry of commerce and industry has began adopting required measures so india stands first in the number of organic farmers and it ranks 9 in terms of area under the organic farming the next topic is draft geo heritage sites and geo relics preservation and maintenance bill so this one uh, geo heritage sites are those sites which are rare and unique which have rare and unique geological and geomorphological significance so geological survey of india has declared 32 geo heritage sites including fossil parks like shivalik fossil park in himachal pradesh geological marvels like lonar lake in maharashtra and rock mountains like peninsula glaciers in karnataka so to preserve protect and maintain geo heritage sites and geo relics of national importance ministry of mines has published a draft bill so as per the draft bill geo heritage sites is declared as the national importance and area under each geo heritage site is declared as 
prohibited area and is regulated and a regulated area the next topic is fifth international marine protected areas congress so it is a global forum that brings together ocean conservation professionals and high level officials to inform inspire and act on the marine protected areas so it aims to protect 30% of the global ocean by 2030 and impact 5 that is the fifth international marine protected areas congress 5 so recently concluded conducted in canada the next topic is marine spatial planning framework msp framework so it is a part of indo norway integrated ocean initiative to balance sustainable management of ocean resources and coastal environment preservation so marine spatial planning is a process of allocation of some areas for the human activities in the marine marine uh, areas to achieve ecological economy uh, ecological economic and social objectives so india is the first uh, marine spatial planning framework launched in puducherry the next topic is river sites alliance so rca so it is a platform for river uh, cities to discuss and exchange information for sustainable ban- management of urban rivers so dara 2023 that is driving holistic action for urban rivers annual meeting of rca members was held recently so it is a platform to co-learn and discuss solutions for managing local water resources so <clears throat> it focuses on networking capacity building and technical support The next topic is red sanders. So traffic, traffic is a monitoring network to undertake data collection recommendations on wildlife trade. So it was established in nineteen seventy six by World Wildlife Fund and International Union for Conservation. So this traffic was uh, has highlighted that red sanders is India's most exploited exploited tree species. The next topic is Chita translocation. So memorandum of understanding was signed on the reintroduction of the cheetahs to India with the aim to expand the cheetahs population in India. So National Tiger Conservation Authority is the nodal agency for the project. So Asian cheetahs are protected under the appendix 1 of the site and critically endangered in IUCN status. next topic is pangolin so pangolins are the only mammals uh, which are wholly covered by the scales so they are the ecosystem en- engineers that help the soil circulation so out of eight species of pangolin two species are found in india they are the indian pan- pan- pangolin pangolin and the chinese pangolin so as per the study between 2018 to 2022 over Thousand pangolins are poached and trafficked. The next topic is Ladakh's first biodiversity heritage site. So Yaya Tso is the Ladakh Ladakh's first biodiversity heritage site. It is the highest breeding sites of the black bug, uh, black necked crane in India. So also the wildlife species like bar headed goose, black necked crane, and uh, Brahmini duck. are found here so in 2022 mahendra giri hills of odisha is added in the biosphere heritage sites also so it was the last added one till date the next topic is shinkula tunnel or shinkula pass so this pass connects himachal pradesh lahaul valley and the ladakh's zanskar valley next topic is dickinsonia so dickinsonia is the is considered to be the earth's oldest animal next is pmn or polymetallic nodules exploration so pmn are the small potato like rounded material composed of minerals such as manganese nickel cobalt copper and iron hydroxide so these are found in the deep sea so india has been assigned an area of about 75000 square kilometers in central indian ocean basin for the pmn exploration 
the next topic is pfa or the forever chemicals so new study has found that found alarming levels of toxic forever chemicals in norwegian uh, arctic ice which affect which may affect the wildlife so these forever chemicals in norway norway antarctic region may affect the world wildlife the next topic is bisphenol a bpa chemical so it is the chemical primarily used in the production of polycarbonate plastics so recently study has highlighted that due to the presence of the bisphenol a in urban drains the breeding of mosquitoes has accelerated the next topic is sustainable development goal sdg aggregate uh, uh, agri food accelerator program okay so this program was launched by fao and seed partnership to help agri food system startups to develop their businesses the next topic is climate smart varieties of wheat so indian agricultural research institute scientists have developed three climate smart varieties of wheat that is hd csw18 hd 3410 hd 3385 so these three are the varieties of climate smart wheat the next topic is earth's in, inner core so scientists from australia national university has discovered a new layer at earth's inner core so it is the crystalline structure within the innermost region and is solid due to the high pressure within the earth so far we have five layers of earth structure so first one is crust it is a topmost and outermost layer with 1% of earth volume and mantle is a solid layer of earth with 84% of earth's volume outer core is a liquid portion of core composed of 80% of iron nickel and other lighter elements and inner core is a solid portion composed of iron and nickel with the presence of heavy heavy metals like gold platinum palladium silver and tungsten so fifth layer is the newly discovered innermost core the next topic is heat dome so hot air trapped within the atmosphere that cannot go outside the atmosphere due to the greenhouse gases and gets trapped within the particular area leading to the heat waves in that region so it is a high pressure circulation in atmosphere which acts like a heat dome or cap the next topic is mammatus clouds so mammatus clouds are some of the most unusual and distinctive clouds formation within the series of bulges or pouches emerging from the base of the cloud next topic is biodiversity of area beyond national jurisdiction treaty united nations high seas treaty so the main aim of this treaty is to protect at least 30% of the world's land and ocean by 2030 The next topic is UN 2023 Water Conference. So UN 2023 Water Conference is the most important one. It is its main aim is to promote comprehensive understanding of importance of water, sanitation, hygiene and to facilitate effective management of water. And the five themes of the UN 2023 Water Conference are water for health water for sustainable development water for climate resilience and environment water action decade water for cooperation the next topic is ar6 synthesis report climate change 2023 so synthesis report for six assessment cycle that is ar6 was released by the intergovernmental panel on climate change that is ipcc so as per the report the global surface temperature reached 1.1 degree celsius above 1850 to 1900 in 2011 to 20 and agricultural and ecological droughts has increased and heavy rainfall is also observed in some places and there are gaps between the global ambitions and some of declared national ambitions the next topic is 
climate justice so climate justice is the justice that links development and human rights to achieve human centered approach to address the climate change and the initiatives taken by india to address the climate change are for effect efforts of efforts for mini, mitigation national action plan on climate change national adaptation fund on climate change was introduced for renewable energy international solar alliance national hydrogen mission one sun one world one grid mission is introduced for reducing emissions national clean air program faster development faster adoption and manufacturing of hybrid and electric vehicles was introduced for the commitment of climate actions goal of net zero by 2070 and life initiative that is lifestyles for environment movement was introduced for the conservation of forest and water the mami gange mission national mission for green india national afforestation program was introduced and for the sustainable agriculture national mission for sustainable agriculture national innovations in climate resilience agriculture was introduced and for protecting rights of indigenous community panchayats extension to scheduled areas act 1996 that is pisa act and forest rights act 2006 was introduced for the infrastructure and waste management coalition for disaster resilient infrastructure and swachh bharat mission were introduced the next topic is draft carbon credit trading scheme so credit uh, sorry carbon credit trading scheme aims to reduce or remove greenhouse gas emissions so the carbon credit rating draft scheme mainly consists of structure of proposed indian carbon market for voluntary trading like private entities and compliance markets like public entities the next topic is global greenhouse gas monitoring infrastructure ggmi so this ggmi is launched by the world meteorological organization and it provides better ways of measuring planet warming pollution so ggmi gives all the data regarding pollution by collaborating with all data providers it improves our understanding of carbon cycle and supports the initiatives of unfccc uh, including global stock harm stock harm uh, stock uh, global stock take ipcc assessment reports enhanced transparency framework national inventories etc the next topic is um right to repair so right to repair in india is extended to four sectors namely consumer durables mobile and electronics automobile equipment and farm equipment the next topic is electron electric vehicles policy so as there is a high oil imports um as air pollution in india is increasing is deteriorating and to meet international commitments of net zero carbon emission by 2070 proper encouragement and infrastructure facilities should be set up for the efficient usage of the electric vehicles and for this purpose implementation and regulation of electric vehicles is necessary so parliamentary standing committee on estimates presented a report to frame a national policy on electric vehicles the next topic is landslide atlas of india so isro has released the landslide atlas of india and as per the report 42.85% of northeastern himalayas uh, 33.33% of northwest himalayas 21.38% of western ghats and konkan he- konkan hills and 2.38% of eastern ghats of araku region in andhra pradesh are prone to the landslides in india The next topic is carbon dioxide emissions in 2022 report. So its CO2 emissions 2022 report is released by the International Energy Agency and as per the report global energy related uh, CO2 emissions grew by 10 0.9% in 2022 and clean energy technologies help to prevent additional 550 million tons of carbon dioxide emissions the next topic is biofuels uh, sorry um bio resources for commercial purposes so bio resources are plants animals microorganisms genetic material and their products 
which are used for their for the for making of drugs food flavors cosmetics fragrances etc so for using bio resources in uh, indian entity has to give an intimation to the state board while obtaining any uh, bio resources for commercial utilization under the biodiversity act of 2002 the next topic is Asiatic lions. So Gujarat government has proposed Barda Wildlife Sanctuary as the second home of Asiatic lions after the Gir National Park and Maldhari community lives near the Barda region of Gujarat. Asian, Asian lions are only found in India in five protected Asiatic, um, five protected uh, areas of Gujarat, they are Gir National Park, Gir Sanctuary, Pania Sanctuary, Mityala Sanctuary, and Girnar Sanctuary. The next topic is Greater Panna Landscape Council (GPLC). So, Greater uh, sorry, Ken Betwa Link Project is an interlinking river project through Panna Tiger Reserve. It transfers water from Ken to Betwa River, and the Greater Panna Landscape council has proposed some objectives so they are to ensure a win-win situation for conservation and development to enable better habitat to provide species specific and site specific monitoring strategies the next topic is heat index reading so hi reading so it gives estimation of water temperatures uh, which are exact so in uh, Indian Meteorological Department will soon give HI readings. Next topic is striving for clean air, air pollution and public health in South Asia report. So it is released by the World Bank. The next topic is liquid tree or liquid three. So liquid three contains water and uses microalgae to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and improve air quality by binding carbon dioxide and producing pure oxygen through photosynthesis so it is more efficient than trees and serbia has introduced liquid tree to combat air pollution the next topic is desalination plants so desalination is a process of obtaining fresh water from the from uh, either sea water or the brackish water from the estuaries so national institute of ocean technology will set up a green self-powered desalination plants in lakshadweep next topic is south atlantic anomaly so or saa saa is the large region of low magnetic intensity in the atmosphere stretching from south america and south west africa 